Hey. Da, 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 da. We're, We're here. Back. We're here. Burr, 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 burr. You, you might have noticed a little bit less background behind us. And a little bit less mic stands and a little bit less furniture. Furniture. Fuck, I'm going to forget that. A little bit less furniture. You can't see the chair. Because we're in Japan! Japan! We, You're I definitely... Looked the, I looked at the monitor, not the camera. Whatever, there's going to be a lot of that because we have the jankiest setup ever right now, but we're here on your screen, so yeah. that's all that matters, right? Yeah, we, we're doing the podcast again. We're going to be doing it regularly. It has taken us about a month to get to it because, oh my oh gosh. Oh my god. We uh, went through... I went through hell. Mm-hmm. So and, much hell. And Absolute I helped. Hell. <laughs> You didn't help make it hell. No, I helped make survive it not the hell. hell. You helped survive yeah. the hell. Um, but yeah, yeah, we we actually moved end of Mar- March, end of March. Yeah. Um, but we had like a week of hecticness yeah. trying to get settled because there's so much paperwork and shit to do once you get here and get to our house. And then quite literally, as soon as we got settled into our house, I got... Like, like the day we were planning to start the recording the podcast. Yeah, I woke up and had a giant, uh, gross morning, abscess in my mouth. Like, on, like in on, on not on the outside of my mouth, but like on the outside of my gums. There was just this disgusting, painful spot. It was, it was rough. Yeah, and um, we went to one dentist who fucking sucked and quite... Literally traumatized me. Oh my god! Yeah, and, um, and, and charged out the ass for doing literally doing nothing, nothing. Nothing. They literally put me through nothing. so much pain. They they were like, "Oh, we're just gonna look at it, right?" And then they decided on the spot that they were gonna like lance it, but they they said they were gonna irrigate it, and they didn't tell me. I'm so fucking scared of the dentist. You guys have no like. I am so scared of the dentist. I usually like even for like a. A cleaning I cry because I'm I, and and so I was like okay this is you know they're just looking at it and then they were like we're going to irrigate it which involves fucking poking a hole in it and they didn't give me a choice they didn't they didn't warn me they uh, didn't anything like Jeff was in the waiting room and he could hear me crying and, and then, from the like dental chair and then the kicker is they didn't actually irrigate it they just um, poked a, they just kind of poked a hole in it and then gave you antibiotics and that mouthwash. killed me that killed me and then yeah. yeah they gave me these antibiotics that i wasn't used to like japanese antibiotics and they fucked me up i was like throwing up i i couldn't function i couldn't sleep because they kept me up like so after a few days of that it wasn't getting better or anything it was getting worse it was spreading to my ear too i had like the infection was because it was on this side it was like spreading up to my ear uh, and then we went to the greatest dentist ever. We, we found a really, really good dentist who is so nice. And they switched my antibiotics to um, like a moxicillin, which I'm used to and don't die from. And I found out that I have not one, not two, but three root canals. Woo! And not only that, they were root canals that were already done. By they another are, crappy dentist They are teeth in that Surrey. already have crowns on them. Three teeth that have crowns on them. Uh, reinfected. Yeah. So I, I have just teeth are genetic, right? You're like enamel health and shit is genetic. No matter how good your dental hygiene is, having weak and shitty enamel is, is just genetic. Um, and (laughs) I lost the genetic lottery in that sense. So, um, unlike you, you have really good enamel. Um, you, yeah, you, you haven't, you have like any cavities. Do you? No, I, I, I get them from time to time. I mean, like have you ever funny. had any fillings? Yeah. A couple? When I was a kid, yeah. Yeah, exactly. When you were a kid, though, right? Yeah, when you no, were I, younger. I, I but take like, care of my teeth. And but like, I do, too. We take care of our teeth at the, to the same degree, right? And mine are... It just sucks. Anyway, um, yeah, so we found out... They did, like, a CT scan of my face, which is crazy. I've never... I didn't even know a dentist could do that, but they had a CT machine there. And they did a CT scan instead of just an X-ray of my face. And they were able to show me, like, the canals in my teeth. Um, and they were, like, showing me. They're like, look, you can not only see the abscess, like, the base of the abscess up in your near your jaw. And it was, like, up against my jaw, which is scary. Yeah. Um, but they were like, look, you can see that the canals were only half cleaned out, which they're supposed to clean out. When you do a root canal, they're supposed to, to clean out the whole canal and then put the, the, the what's it called? The crown. They crown put the crown, crown on, right? So, yeah, this, this shitty dentist in Surrey, which what really blows my mind is my dental luck. Yeah, we've never, like, 
cheaped out on dental offices or like chosen just the cheapest one available. I always like search for ones that say that they're good with anxiety and I got fucked. Fucked. Anyway, so I had to get those root canals redone, which was so goddamn expensive, which sucks, but it was worth it because this dentist is amazing. Um, And then after the first root canal, everything was good. And I went in for the second root canal like a week later and everything was not good. The abscess came back. So we're, that's where we are now. Um, I'm back on the antibiotics and the abscess is gone again, but they don't want to put put the crown crown on yet because they don't know what's going on with it, which is like, ah, um, so they got a re-examiner and, and yeah, there's a, that's, Uh, so we're not quite done yet, but, but I am no longer in pain. It, It was brutal. It was a brutal few weeks where I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I like, I was just puking. Yeah. And, and which means that by association, Jeff also can't sleep very well and is stressed out and dealing, yeah, I gotta you know, like go with me. Yeah. And... He's got to come with me. I can't go to the dentist alone in Canada, let alone here. Um, yeah. So I got to juggle that and working on videos for, for mother's basement. And that's been, uh, basically all of our time, but I, th- let's roll it back and talk a little bit about the actual process of like moving to Japan. So the, uh, February. February of when we got our visa. It all happened really fast. Like our application had been in for a very long time. We applied in August? August? Right? Yeah. No, we, no it was before then, I think. It was, no, it it was, was like... <sighs> yeah, it was like the start of summer that we, um, yeah, and we didn't... put in for it. But then... Um... We got our visas in February. Um, so it took a very long time to get them. But whatever, we got them. And then we moved a month later. Yeah, it, I... It was kind of tricky because we we put in for our uh, application and then like we put in at just the wrong time, where like people who were before us in line got processed in, in like a couple months. People who were after us were getting processed in a couple months, but it took us like six months to get done. But then when it was done, it was just like uh, we go, went go, back go, go, and go. forth to the embassy a couple times. Um, yeah, we had to drive down to Calgary to get because you got to go to the embassy in person, but. Yeah, we we moved a month later. Yeah, um, we we packed up just a couple bags of clothes and um, and fuas and yeah and your fuas and you know uh, laptops and and equipment that we need to record and stuff um, because we have we own our house back in uh, in Canada in, in Edmonton. Edmonton. So um, we left the cats back there with Yazzie's mom taking care of them. Um, <laughs> the babies, I miss them so much. I do too. Podcast's going to be a lot worse without them interrupting us. Like, actually, though. Oh, um, my God, I miss them so much. <laughs> <laughs> but we get regular FaceTime calls with them, so that's helping. Yeah, and all our, all our stuff is just kind of... Oh, that was my ankle. Yeah. All our stuff is just, like, waiting for us. Yeah. Um, so all that's back there. We're kind of starting a new KonMari life by default just because we don't have anything. Um, where we're, you know, we're going to slowly collect stuff when we actually start going out to Akiba and stuff. Um, but like our first month was just so many bureaucratic appointments. Uh... There's so many like just thing, you know, you, you got to go to the ward office to establish your address and, um, you know, you got to go through customs to get your Zyru card, which is, uh, your foreigner id um i mean that's that's when you get here yeah but um, um just a lot of stuff you have to do you got to get a bank account but to get a bank account you have to have a phone and but to, to get a phone you need a bank, bank account, account. And so it's just we got um, very lucky though because we have geeks plus helping us and they're able to like not only come with us places um to talk for us yeah um but you know they were able to figure out the logistics of stuff and like get get us to be able to get around that kind of stuff because you know, um, we're, yeah, they, I mean, a, they can actually speak to the people. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Is like a lot of, a lot um, of it is a language barrier where they're like, you know, so, um, thank you, Rie. Thank you, thank you Rie. Much, Rie. You're you so helpful. We love so you. Everyone at Geeks Plus has been extremely helpful, mm-hmm. but especially Rie. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, she's the one who's been going places with us, took us to the bank helping and us get our phone, to get our phone. Us, yeah. It, but yeah, we had to do a lot of running around the first couple of weeks. And um, then, and, bam. And tooth. also, 
also like moving into our house was tricky because we had to like go pick up the key um which was like a day and then we had to get electricity and uh gas gas and, and water all that set up um and and the internet uh and then we were in a hotel for that again incredible thank, hotel thank yeah, you thank geeks you plus. geeks plus so they put us up in kabuki cho tower in just like the Be- fanciest Be- Bellu star Be- Bellu star pan yeah. pacific it's a pan pacific hotel it's like the is, fanciest hotel yeah which I've is ever like been in ever i um, i could not but on the first night i got a little bit sick a little jeff got like i don't know if it was i think it was just like travel exhaustion yeah or plus something i i yeah, I, I I had some like seaweed chips that were just like the worst combination of greasy and salty. And um, yeah, when we land, like when we got back, like when we got to the hotel for the very first, like within night. a few hours of us getting there, um, I poor Jeff. <laughs> yeah, that was like the start of our bad luck. Yeah. Uh, Jeff puked into the bathtub. Yeah, um, not your fault. There was nothing. <laughs> Yeah, we had a lot of bad luck. Like, like so it was we, a rough start. Yeah, we were in the hotel waiting for like our bed to arrive and stuff, and then our bed didn't arrive immediately. It like uh, we had to like wait a couple days, um, and it just didn't show up the whole first day that we were waiting there. So we had to like push back our time in the hotel, and we so we ran out of time in the nice hotel. So we had to go to an APA hotel. APA. APA. APA which, um, you know, it, it's, if we, we were able to sleep in the room for a day <laughs> yep. and we really appreciate uh, the, the last minute setup for that, but like, would not recommend. Oh my God, it was so hot. And yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah. APA hotels, APA, I don't know if it's APA or APA. It's APA because that stands for something. Um, oh, but I, it stands for something. I know that because when I looked it up, um, to find out about their crazy CEO, their bonkers, unhinged, like insane nationalist CEO. When I was yeah. looking that up, a- um, APA hotel amenities do not always include things like uh, air conditioning. In your they don't. Room, they don't know. But no, but no APA they does. do include uh, documents on lies told about the Japanese no, imperial it's, it's, army. No, it's the true history of Japan is what yeah. they call it, uh, which. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah, so no APA hotel has, uh, that I've seen, that I looked up, has, um, like, temperature control. And they still had the heat on. It was, like, 20 degrees outside Celsius, and they had the heat on. It was, really it was insane, but it whatever. Was, and then we got our, our we, place. And we got our bed. Um, koala, if you ever move to Japan. Uh, one of the only people who sell king mattresses. Yeah, and, and um, yeah, they're pre- as bed a, in a box goes, pretty good, yeah. I would say. They, you know. Yeah. I, I still prefer a purple back home, but we but could not get that over here. They so. don't sell those in Japan. So, yeah. um, and then after all that, the tooth hit, and yeah. you just heard all about that. So, yeah. so that's been basically what we've been dealing with. We've had like a couple chances to like go out with friends, but most of our going out has been like cell phone, ward office, et cetera, et cetera, um, sitting around watching anime. Um, and not anime things to distract yeah, yeah. ourselves. Cause yeah, because it, it, when you're tired and sick, it's hard to watch, um, like, subtitled stuff sometimes. So. But also, like, when you're living here, you just kind of need a break from it a little bit. <laughs> but, more than I mean, that's how you end up... Yeah, not taking a break from it is how you end up... Burning out. And watching things in two times speed. Which we so, don't do. No, no. We um, solemnly... We solemnly swear that we, we will, will not ever <laughs> watch anime in two times speed. That if we ever promise. admit to doing that, take us out back. Yeah, yeah. Just um, <laughs> take our channels out back. And yeah. I was, I was going to say do hickey them. <laughs> you can't say that on the podcast. I was going to say do hickey. You can't say do hickey. <laughs> we can't say do hickey. So um, anyway. So anyway, yeah, we, we had our first, like, we had a trip out with um, uh, some friends of ours uh, that we had to cut kind of short because you were feeling sick from, Every, as everything. we found out later, your tooth. Um, and we had our first, like, real trip out yesterday where we went to the uh, Dungeon Meshi exhibit at Tokyo Skytree. 
Um, and that was that really was cool. a hot, sweltering sardine can. Uh, shout out to Aluma Tima. Tim. Or, or Luma Timma. Or Tim. I, I don't know how to pronounce Tim. the handle. Tim on Twitter for, for uh, taking us there. Us the tickets and everything. That was, we had a fun time uh, checking out the exhibit and just wandering around. Going to size area and our first, our first size area, you yeah. know, the, the extremely high quality and classy. It was really yummy. It, it um, was, it was yeah, delicious. I'm, I'm, so size area is the family restaurant that Wagneria uh, from working is based on. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So if you've seen that anime, we went to that restaurant and it was delicious and like shockingly cheap. Yeah, it was uh, like thirteen dollars for each of us to get a meal and a drink. Like total, like total, total for the two for of us. All of us. Yeah, no, yeah, the two for, of the two of us. Yeah, yeah. For you and I, it was thirteen hundred yen. So that was yeah, that was crazy. Um, and the drinks are bottomless. Um, <laughs> I mean that that's what they're famous for. That's why yeah. everyone goes and loves little family restaurants because juice bar. Yeah. Um, and then we went to the Takagi Shrine. Yeah, which has a a tie-in with teasing Master Takagi-san. Which, I mean, not really. Like, there's nothing... I mean, they have a standee. Yeah, (laughs) because it's called called Takagi. And she's in her Shrine Maiden outfit. Yep, Uh, and they also had a New Year's one, too, that we saw on Google Maps. But um, very cute shrine. Uh, If you're near Skytree, go see it. Because from what I understand, they are trying to get more people to go there. Yeah. And get more patronage and stuff so and it's not just the standee i mean the standee there is cool they got um it's it's from like 2022 so they've had it a couple years and they take real good care of it um but yeah it's it's her in a miko outfit and then there's like you said there was a different one that's yeah her new, new year's, year's one her but like the new year's come on their other gimmick um is they have little white rocks painted like rice balls um, oh, it's all rice ball themed there's rice ball yeah. like hidden rice balls everywhere you're, you're like i forget what the fortunes are called but those come with rice ball stickers um, um purely because of a pun in the name it's got nothing to do with onigiri the shrine itself the deity i, I thought i'd see a rice rice ball but it was him dio i'll put that on screen <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, no, it was, it, there's a lot of just fun little things there, and it's right down the street from another shrine that's got some um, very cute fox statues. I mean, statues. all shrines have those. Yeah, no, I know, but it's got, you know, it's it's a uh, fox deity shrine, and it's got, like, uh, just a really cool little arrangement of statues. We didn't get any pictures of We didn't get any pictures There's of no that. point talking about this one. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, there's another cool street shrine I mean, literally down the street yeah. from that one. So Shrines check that everywhere. out while you're at Takagi Shrine. Go see, see Takagi, Takagi Shrine now. Standy. Because they even, yeah, they have a picture of the voice actresses there too. Voice actress. I, I guess maybe the boy is played by a female voice Probably. actress too. Because um, it was two, it was two like female voice actresses holding their little shrine. I don't know what those are called. We got to look it up. Those like wishes, your little wishes that you tie up there. Um, like, you you don't know it's okay. <laughs> don't yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. It's better to say you don't know than to embarrass to yourself. Try to like come up with. Um, um, the, but yeah, yeah. Dungeon Meshi. Um, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, so we. But my God, was it a sardine can? Because it was the last day. Yeah. Uh, it, um, it took us two hours to get through. So the reason that we had to go to the shrine in the first place is because we got there at uh, one thirty, um, and then we gave them the tickets that. Tim had bought earlier, uh, and they gave us a ticket to come back at uh, 3.30. 3.30, so we had two hours to kill. Um, and by the time we got back, there was, like, a line, you know, out the door. Uh, the whole thing, you're basically just, like, moving very slowly in this single file line. Yeah, you're staring uh, at the same picture for a very long time. It was fun, though, but, oh, it, yeah, it, it. I think if you were, if there was no line, it would have taken half an hour to get through. Mm-hmm. But because you had to move in, like it was just a giant line through the whole thing, it took a little over two hours to get yeah. through. You're just like stopping to appreciate the random anime screenshots on the wall, and then occasionally you'll get to like a cool piece of of, of like the character sheet plus some of the gengas from episodes that like gives you a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. And then between those, they had these really cool. Um, models of the food from the show made replicas of the food we'll put that on screen while you talk to yeah i think those are made by like the people who do um you know the 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 fake food for ramen shops i i don't know they didn't they looked like they were they didn't look like they were wax they looked like they were like hard plastic resin yeah that's what they make those no they don't they make them out of wax i've I've watched a lot of cool videos of that they make it out of wax okay well i mean it's very cool um but yeah yeah, they look like hard plastic resin 
I think it would have melted if it were wax. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was so hot. But, I mean, they have... They use resin like that sometimes for the ramen shop. I don't know. Um... But yeah, so it, you it, guys it, decide does this this food on screen here look like wax? I don't resin? think it was wax, I th- but you know, I, I they made models that looked like the models that you would find in a food Japanese shop. restaurant. You know, uh, a food shop. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what am I? Okay. It's not, like Jeff, don't embarrass yourself by saying the wrong name of the wooden shrine plaque things that they Food have. Food shop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, so it was a cool exhibit. Uh, we weren't allowed to film in there because they had like audio drama stuff yeah, you're just, yeah, with the characters. They, they, they just yeah, didn't. Um, they allowed photos, no video. And of course, we're not going to be those foreigners who are taking fucking video pretending that they can't read the sign that said in English, no video. So yeah. we only took pictures because we're good people. <laughs> Because we're better than shitty people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I the the there was a lot of cool stuff there. You know, like they had there was uh, a sword, big big model of the dragon. Um, yeah, ke- they had Kensuke. They had like the sword on display with like Kensuke's little tendrils peeking up out of the hilt. Um, one of the, I, one of the coolest food dioramas was like a plate of cooked uh, living armor mollusks next to a bunch of discarded plate armor um it was a really cool display overall like they set it up so that each s- section is dedicated to a different character but, but also, it was also different floors yeah it's, it's the different floors of the dungeon so you're going down through each floor as you go through um and then at the end they had like a bunch of cool photo ops uh like we didn't we didn't get any photos with the kraken um, but they had like a, you know, a, a, a thing where you could pretend you're being eaten by the Kraken. Um, they had a little st- stand to the side where you could pretend you're being attacked by the living plants on the plant floor. Um, I, I unfortunately had to dip about halfway through. Um, I don't, I overheat really easily. And you're um, still feeling sick. Yeah. And I'm still, yeah, I'm still taking those antibiotics and stuff and like. I just have anxiety. Um, so about halfway through was like how tight the crowd was and how insanely hot in there it was and how sick I was feeling. I, I had to, you just I had, had to, to skip dip over the line. Yeah. yeah and I, I mean, I felt bad trying to like, I didn't want to, you know, I was like, excuse me, excuse me man, trying to get through and stuff. Cause I, there was no way out other than through. Um, but yeah, so I didn't get to see all of it, which is not, it's fine with, you know, my, but, and there was no re-entry either. Um, mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I didn't get to see all of it, but I'm also yeah. not crazy but, uh, about Dungeon Meshi. I was there as a plus one. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, that's how like hot and, and like it, it sardine-esque was, it was in there. It was really it, like, basically every room was like a pressure cooker, except for the, the water floor appropriately. Like you could feel the AC. You the could. No, you could. Oh uh, yeah, I guess Jeff, I was tall Jeff was above the walls. walls yeah. yeah. So um, you could, but that room had flashing lights in it. It mm-hmm. had like a disco light to make the it seemed like you were walking through water. And that just that, that, that just that, made me feel even more dizzy and, and stressed. But yeah, so, so other than that I had fun though. Yeah. I had fun though. I'm not complaining. I had fun. Um for the parts that you saw. And I mean And I had a nice time sitting outside in the breeze. So yeah. you didn't like miss that much much because she got through all the stuff showing like real production stills and the rest was like um there was a theater where they showed off the fight with the dragon mixed with uh you know gengas uh and and like different stages of the storyboarding and 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 the animation process so it was really cool like you know seeing how the sakuga for one of the coolest fights in the show came together um and then they had, uh, you know, the, the room with the big dragon in it um, and a gallery of art by the mangaka uh, with, you know, some some stuff by, uh, I think, the trigger artists, too. Um, just, you know, like, like... Cool shit. Yeah, cool shit that's kind of a tribute to the whole series. And then at the end, there was a gift shop uh, where I got some standees. Which we'll put up on the screen here, right, right, right here, too. Yeah, I should have brought them up. Well, no, I mean, um, we'll just, it's easier to show a picture of them. So. And, and, oh, and they had the treasure coins for sale as, like, collectible coins, too. Or the, the treasure bugs. Um, treasure coins. But, but, yeah, the treasure bugs. So, like, one side it's a coin face, and the other side it's the 
little underside of the uh, bug. Um, very cool, collectible to have. Um, so yeah. I got, we got a few things from there. Unfortunately, a lot of the really cool stuff was already sold out. By yeah, it was It was the last day, so it was the last few hours of the last day. It, it ended at 6 p.m., and we were there at 3, so. Yeah. I think at some point they had, like, a temporary cafe there, too, where you could eat stuff. I'm not sure. Though. I don't know, but there was also a free run cafe downstairs that we didn't check you, out. You because, need an appointment for yeah, that. Yeah, res- reservation, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> You're making fun of me for food shop? Appointment. It's a, I'm just trying to get even. <laughs> But, um, yeah, we just took a little peek at it. There wasn't, like, I don't even think there were, like, cutouts or anything in there. It was just, like, it just said Free Rin Cafe and the food was kind of themed. Yeah. Um, no, they had, like, standees you could buy. Of no, 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 but, I mean, there weren't, like, cardboard cutouts like a lot of things have. Yeah. You know, yeah. like. They just had, like, Free Rin playing on some videos on the side. And, yeah. Um, you could you could buy merch of the characters in cafe food outfits. serving outfits. Cafe outfits, not food. Some of them are. I'm trying. Chefs and waiters. Damn it, damn it! I'm trying real hard to get even for that food shop. Shame. <laughs> I'll get why, you why one you day, getting, smart man. You're, you're the one I'll get you yourself. one day, Mister Word Word Man. Wee woo wee woo. I don't know if it's picking up the um, ambulance, but. So anyway, that's been Japan. Yeah. We'll have more to talk about next time because hopefully, not to, you know, knock, knock, knock on wood, um, that I'm feeling better and it goes away, that this round of antibiotics kills it and it doesn't come back because I don't want to think about that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. on to topical shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we'll we'll get to all the stuff that we've been watching and playing in bed at the end of the video. We're going to talk about some anime news, though, because uh, there's been some in the last week. So uh, kind of a big deal. Uh, they are... Don't want to alarm you. They, I, I don't want... Yeah, I mean, it's not, and it's not just Pixiv. It's a... It's, uh, DL like the, site, too. Yeah, DL site is the... Well, but the so... Not to alarm you, but they are taking away your hentai. Um, literally and not ironically. Yeah, um, literally, not ironically. This is not. Yeah. Did I say unironically? Did I say? Did I say ironically? Literally. No, you un- said not ironically. Okay. Yeah. Unironically. Un- un- un-ironically. But but this isn't like outrage bait. This is not you know making a, a mole, mountain out of a molehill. Mole out of <laughs> making a yeah. Uh, this is not making a mountain out of a molehill. Like somebody tweeted something uh, disrespectful to a hot anime lady, and that's the end of the world. No, this is like Visa and Mastercard. Oh, are, for, for DL site, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think Pixiv is directly related to. No, it, it is. No, it, because it, it's Fanbox. It's no. So no, Pixiv itself, the website. If you are in the, if your country is set to U.S. or U.K., you cannot view. R18 art for anything. Not not just Fanbox. That's that's the payment processors for DL site and Fanbox. But like it's it's more serious than that. If but, you but, if your country is set to the US, you cannot view R18 material on Pixiv. But that's the reason for that is they're trying to get around Visa and MasterCard restricting what you can pay for in North America. No, it's because of stuff like the Texas law that means they have you have to send in phone, photo ID for verification. That that's why they're doing it. Is that they're going by the the same rules? Oh, okay. It's, right. So it's got nothing to do with, with that one. So D, you are correct about DL site and okay. Fanbox, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, so but, yeah, so Fanbox they were limiting like what t- what tags artists could be paid for through DL site to like um, just a bunch of you know tags you're not allowed to do anymore because they're considered. And that didn't work. Um, so for a while, yeah, they were like, oh, just to appease Visa and MasterCard, don't use all of these suggestive tags. And then like a month later, they just said no more Visa, MasterCard, Amex. It is JCB or whatever, JBC, the Japanese bank and convenience store pay only. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah. But the um, Pixiv ban, um, like the actual, their reason, restriction for healthy expression in specific countries and regions. So they said you cannot – so in the U.S., it's posts that contain or depict – fuck, I can't fucking read. Hold on. I got to zoom in. 
oh my god, I'm like an old person. I got, I got, I got to get my magnified text size on. Um, so they just like blanket banned. Uh, like things make sense. Okay, so they're doing what Canada did, right? So Canada has a has a customs ban, not a. It's not illegal to have. It is illegal to import, as we learned from Metamorphosis. Mm-hmm. Um, it is it is prohibited to import things that involve um, like uh, degradation, which is a very broad term Mm -hmm. degradation is like an insanely broad term um uh for some reason they specify urination as like a thing you can't import um bestiality which makes sense um but as we saw in that one episode of border security uh they haven't decided yet if furries if furries count (laughs) um and a couple other things including but not limited to treason um, that was the other thing on the list was treason. I was like, oh, I think that uh, degradation material and treason are two very different things, yeah. but let's put them all under the same law. Anyway, um, Canada does that as well as Australia, which you guys might remember. Um, Joey. Joey talked about yeah. that and it got a very negative response, but he was right. He was right. And this is proof. Pixiv banning it like wide now is proof that he was right he was like it's not going to stop there it's a slippery slope unfortunately that video is gone now because the backlash was so insane um but he was right so they start with you know stuff that nobody is really offended by having it banned and if you like try to defend it it and say this shouldn't be banned people are like why don't you want that banned you, you're a, you you're know. a you're a gooner you're an you know you're you're you're, I mean, you're like, a freak or whatever like it's not even like gooner it's like like straight up criminal implications, right? But yeah, the, that's what they yeah. throw around. Yeah, not and that we, not that, the, yeah, not that it it is what you get accused of. Yes. for trying to defend it, like what happened to Joey, and he was right in the end. It is a slippery slope, and now all of the R eighteen shit is gone. From yeah, you can't access any of that uh, in the U S. on uh, or any outside of Japan, really. No, no, it's the U S. and U K. It's banned. US so Canada is still okay, but again, that's. For now. For now. It's only a matter of time before they get rid of all Western countries, and that is not a made-up scenario. Yeah. So. And, yeah, and it's. You need to put your, like, moral complaints aside for this kind of thing because it is, like, it is a slippery slope. Yeah. Right? And it has in the past been used to attack. So- Minorities. So the reason Yazzie brought up the the uh, Canadian laws because those have been rolled back. No, they have not. No, they have not. They have not changed. No, but some of them were because there was a situation before. No, no, no. The whole point was that they they deemed in the end that as they were wrong in those specific situations, but that they can keep doing it to their discretion because it doesn't go against. The so, charter. So explain what happened in Canada. Okay. So this is what I mean when when I say, like, the slippery slope thing is not a what if, right? We're not, like, making up a fake, like, oh, but what if they do this? It's happened. Where in Vancouver, I'm going to pull up the little article, um, but I actually found out about this originally when um, I was researching about my metamorphosis thing. Um, back in 2000, uh, Canada Customs used these obscenity laws to block an LGBT bookstore in Vancouver from receiving their stuff. They would confiscate everything that was seen as obscene while letting non-LGBT bookstores bring in their straight material of the same genre. Um, and they were constantly taking anything from them. Um, so the bookstore actually took them to court and they said this is a violation of our charter rights, which it was. It was a violation of their charter rights. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, hold on, let me, let me pull up before I miss... Oh my god, my phone's frozen. So, a gay and lesbian bookstore in Vancouver continually had most of its shipments stopped at the Canada-US border. Customs inspectors refused to allow the material to enter Canada, finding it was obscene under the criminal code, which is not true, um, therefore not allowed to be imported under the Customs Act. Under the legislation, the this is the fucked up part. The burden is on the importer to prove that they're not bringing in obscene material. That, that's fucked up. 
that they just take it and then they're like, okay, but you have to prove to us that we're not supposed to take it from you. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. But anyway, the bookstore challenged the constitutionality, big word, of the customs legislation. The trial judge found that customs officials had systematically targeted the store's shipments and wrongfully prohibited their entry into Canada. They used that law against an LGBT bookstore. They use this exact law that people are like, oh, but it's taking away blank thing that I'm morally against. They're coming for you next, okay? Right? He found, however, that while the customs legislation violated the rights to freedom and expression, uh, it was saved under some other thing, and therefore they did not strike down the customs legislation. So they said, okay, technically in this case you're wrong, but you're not challenging the, con the, the customs rules under the Constitution. Yeah. So they, they tried to change it, and the, the BC judge was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. You're right that they were not nice to you guys in this case, but that doesn't matter. These laws are staying. Um, so, yeah, it has been used. Um, and I was talking to Jeff about a quote that I saw that I very much love, and I think it puts things into perspective for this, which is that censorship of this kind, censorship of 18-plus material and stuff, is not a sniper rifle. It is a shotgun. Yeah. And that is the perfect example of it just being used to blast everything, right? Because when you look at it from the outside, you're like, oh, uh, obscene degradation, that must mean abuse, that must mean terrible things happening, right? So it's good that it's going away. When in reality, these were popular S&M books, specifically. The ones they were taking away were were like like novels fictional novels yeah. that involved queer stories like that um so yeah it's a shotgun and this is proof and i think that people aren't upset enough about it i have not seen people talking about it enough yeah it's it's really frustrating like, and like, like people who tried to talk about it got the same reaction now that joey got back then which was people being like well well do you want to see uh, porn of people being abused and it's like N yeah. No, no, but that's not where they're going to stop, and that's not what they stop at. They don't go, well, what do we, what's the, what do we, what does the public morally think of this one, right? Like, yeah, when, when they're putting laws on the books that say you can't depict certain sorts of things or you can't access them via the internet at all, and that the, the, the companies hosting them and letting people ask, access them are like, morally responsible for whatever people access, then that inevitably leads to overreaches and abuses where... And it has. Yeah. That's the thing. That's what I really want to drive home. This is not a what if. This is not like a, a oh, it could happen. It has happened. We had those kind of laws in Canada. And, and look what they did. And yeah, some, some bigot at the customs office used those to target... LGBTQ people that they didn't like. Yeah, and, and like, and yeah, I think that that I want to scream about this little sister bookstore. It's called Little Sisters Book Emporium or something. Um, which, by the way, if you're on Vancouver Island, I think is where they are. Go support them because they're still around uh, and they still talk about and fight for these laws. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, I. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always a slippery slope, and like people will see like. Pixiv pulling out entirely as an extreme measure, right? You know, because they're they're technically the ones who are blocking the U.S. They haven't been legally blocked there yet, even though there's there's laws going on the books in like Texas. Texas I mean, Texas already you can't you can't access um, like Western yeah. porn sites, and like so like already in Texas those are blocked. So. And and like DL site has effectively pulled out. Of working the, the with, West. with yeah, you can't pay for DL site stuff with any Western, you know, card, Western yeah. payment processor anymore because they were just because the alternative was they would have to start taking stuff down and they inevitably have to start taking more stuff down. This same thing has been used against Patreon and. Uh, What's it? OnlyFans? All um, of them. All of yeah. them. Yeah. All, all of them get, get hit by this eventually and have to, you know, limit what kind of content can be posted there. And, you know, every time different groups of people who are, like, against certain types of stuff, you know, like, 
what really bothers me about that, right, is when OnlyFans girls get hit by that type of thing, the 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 hentai gooners. They're like, oh, serves you right, <laughs> you know? whatever. And then you know when the when the stuff gets banned. Uh, or gets targeted by laws. Then the, all then, the morality police people are like, yeah. ha, 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 you in, deserve including, it. Including people who are normally like sex work is work. You know, they're just like, oh, finally, you know, serves this these This thing people, that right? I'm morally against or whatever. And, and it's divide and conquer, like 101. They're you, coming for you next. Yeah. Stop celebrating it. Yeah, it's 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 a real problem. You You can uphold your own personal morals by not consuming it, but by celebrating the censorship of it, uh, that that's just you are celebrating inevitably the censorship of things like LGBT material. Yeah, that's it. That's it. By celebrating the censorship of that thing you're morally against, you are inevitably because they're not stopping. This is not your level of morality. These are Puritans. That's it. They are religious right wing, to be honest, Puritans. Yeah, and they are not stopping with what you think is morally correct. Yeah, it, it's. I feel very strongly about this morality thing. (laughs) And like, that's, you know, that's what really bugs me. Cause like censorship has been like a a topic on various corners of the internet for the last couple weeks over the stupidest shit. There there's petitions to remove a a, tiny little strip of of lace from that. That personally, when I look at that costume, I, I, my subjective opinion is somebody who is, you know, who has worked in like 3D modeling and, and art and all that stuff. My subjective opinion is the costume looked kind of unfinished and they added that for some visual interest in the midsection because it's not like they're s- scared of showing stuff in, in Stellar Blade, right? But like that sparked this whole controversy. Oh God, he's had the title. Get down, oh, no, get down, I, get down. They're coming. <laughs> yeah. But th- that sparked this whole controversy. There's this big petition going they have not oh shut my up God, about it those for fucking weeks. videos free free stellar blade free stellar blade uh, what about pixiv yeah why like, aren't you talking about the actual things that matter where is Sorry. the energy for you know the 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 legislation that is taking pixiv out of america entirely where is the energy for a boycott of mastercard and visa who actually are and have been for years, not not like maybe Sony is maybe putting some policies in place that encourage the developers of Stellar Blade to make slight changes to a costume, literally saying you can't see this or pay for it at all, period. If you want to make money off of it, too bad. You know, like, like where is the outrage about that? Where is the... I know where it is. Non-existent, because as we've discussed before, these people don't actually give a shit. Um, they are just... Having prof- a culture war. They are just professional culture war argument people. They are just people who want something to argue about. And I think the lack of uproar and the fact that everybody moved past the Pixiv thing so fast is kind of proof of that. Yeah, no, for real. I, none I, of these people actually give a shit about true censorship of like non-Western media like, like, the ridiculous thing is, like, I guarantee that because I said that thing about the, the small strip of lace, somebody is going to be down in the comments being like, any amount of censorship is too much. You, you can't defend that. While at the same time, where's the fucking p- petition about MasterCard? Where's the petition about these fucking Texas Republicans saying what you can and can't fap to? Where is the petition for that? Yeah. Where is the outrage for that? Of course, I mean, with the with the Texas guys especially, it's because they're on your side, right? They they're not, you know, it's it's so transparent, right? That they don't actually give a shit what they give a shit about. That you know, they they act like some random Kotaku journalist having an opinion on, and I will say a kind of annoying opinion on whether you know. It's it's okay to be horny for Eve from Stellar Blade, but it's not okay. Or, or no, it's Hades, it, it is okay to be horny for Aphrodite from Hades, but it's not okay to be horny for Eve from Stellar Blade. That's that's like yeah. weird. That's y- are, I, I don't agree with that. Y'all are fucking stupid for starting this argument that way. Fuck. But but 
that's not like a societal problem that is caught leading to like weeks actual censorship reducing people's access to things and weeks of arguments yeah. weeks people have moved on from pixel right yeah whereas they've gone on about this fucking game for weeks for and like where's where's the 10 videos per day about pixel where's the 10 videos per day about mastercard and visa well, Blocking I mean, things. it's because MasterCard and Visa aren't tweeting back at them and giving them <sighs> stuff to, to make. I was canceled on Twitter oh my videos God. about it or whatever. I think, you know? can, I, can I just say this? Um, and I'm sorry if this hurts people's feelings, but the people who are arguing with the Stellar Blade crowd, who are screenshotting their tweets to make fun of them, are just as bad because the only reason this conversation is still going is because they're getting attention. Well, I wouldn't say just as bad. Okay, sorry, they, not just as bad, but... They are fanning the flames nonstop. Yeah, they are, like, they are contributing to it. But, like, the thing is, what these people go after shows what they're really interested in, which is starting arguments and, like, tr attacking people they see as their ideological enemies and just being in this constant state of culture warfare. And it doesn't matter really what the topic is as long as somebody pushes back against them, right? Like... They are. The, oh, go ahead. They are what? As I dare say, tourists. Yeah, no, they're, they're for real. Because they, like, this week it's Stellar Blade. The last few weeks, because they, people won't shut the fuck up. I mean, they go back and forth, right? Like, for the last few weeks it was Stellar Blade, right? But then, for a while, all of these people, many of whom have never painted a miniature or played a war game in their life, were suddenly the most passionate Warhammer fans ever, because they put... Ladies in the Custodies, which is, like, I mean, you can, you can go to Twitter, you can see actual Warhammer fans dunking on these people like crazy, because they stay, say stuff like, Games Workshop gaslit us by, by claiming that this was always the case, when that's how they've handled every retcon that they've ever done. And I say this as, I'm not going to be a tourist, I'm a fucking Warhammer casual, I had a I'm friend. Beyond who, casual. Yeah, I, I had a friend who was really into Warhammer. Um, we played some uh, uh, blanking on the whatever. Not Rogue Trader, the other tabletop role playing game um, where you play the Inquis the Inquisition. We played some some Warhammer Inquisition tabletop together. Um, so I'm I'm like you know I, I've played. 40k Space Marine. I will not claim to be a hardcore Warhammer fan, but like I've been around enough to know that Warhammer, like like Games Workshop, just bullshits whenever they make up some new lore. They're like, this is how it's always been, because that's the tone of it. But, you know, the, these people are constantly exposing them themselves as, as not knowing a thing about what they're talking about. And they just want to argue. And they just want to argue. And, like, the thing is, it's just, all the same people. On they just want to be victims, specifically. Yeah. It's not that they want to argue as much as they want to be victims in every situation. We're victims of censorship, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's very, very victim mentality. We want to be hurt in every... Oh, dare I even say snowflake mentality. It, like, that's the <laughs> thing. Uh, uh, Never Knows Best did an interesting video a couple weeks ago about Gamergate 2, as they were calling it. I don't like using that term because... Because it's like, not. The, you know, the Stellar Blade shit and the Sweet Baby Ink stuff before that never I, reached that like, level. They're so loud about the, the Stellar Blade thing, I forgot about that because they don't care. And they just jumped from one thing to the other. Yeah, I mean, they went back to it when Briefly, this yeah. indie Metroidvania that was actually pretty good uh, called Zao... I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, they made like, they've got like a list. It doesn't matter. They, Whatever. They, yep. But they're, you know, they go back and forth between different things is, is the point, you know, like they're swarming around, uh, Warhammer for a while. Then they go to Stellar Blade. Then they go to Hell Divers because a community manager said something that they don't like. Um, and then, you know, like a couple weeks ago, it was the Capcom localization tweet where they explained how localization works. And like, 
I mean, bunch. Of, they're like, I can't. A bunch of people immediately expose their asses that they have never played a fucking Capcom game. Where they're like, I can't believe that they have this new woke policy. And it's like, have you played Phoenix Wright? What biased cultural assumptions are you bringing into this, guys? Um, you got to check those because, like, Phoenix Wright made up an entire alternate history for Los Angeles. To, to, no, to, you mean Japanifornia? Yeah, Japanifornia to to like make it work. Yeah, and, and like they they descended on that like a swarm of vultures, and it's actually we've never talked about this, but don't you remember they didn't bring over the um, Sherlock Holmes one for a long time because it couldn't be properly localized. So there was two. Yeah, there were two issues with that. One, they couldn't square the localization of. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, the the great Ace Attorney, the the so that that the prequel that's set in like um, the the it's a Sherlock Holmes yeah. ripoff. I mean, well, no, Not Sherlock, Ho- Sherlock Holmes inspired kind of thing. Sherlock Holmes is in it. They go to London for part of it, but it's a prequel that's set in the Meiji period, I think, um, where uh, you know it's it's Phoenix Wright's ancestor who is also an attorney. Um, <laughs> doing attorney stuff in ancient Japan. And there were two problems. One, it was difficult to localize and they had to, you know, figure out how to square it with what they'd already done with the lore. Cause you know, when they, when they localized the first five ace attorney games, they'd have no idea. They had no idea they were going to do this prequel. Um, but two, they had, uh, to, um, the, the Arthur Conan Doyle estate, is extremely litigious about oh anything God. referencing Sherlock Holmes. I, this podcast might get taken down. No, we no, said not, no. It's, it's making like actual, like you making material out of it. I hate those motherfuckers, by the way. Yeah. I, I, I hate those motherfuckers. Greedy, greedy fucks. They are so greedy. That's it. Bottom yeah. text. Bottom They're so text. greedy. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, that's it. They're just so fucking greedy. There, there are anyway, sorry, things you, I despise more than like, the families of great artists who just like ride on the coattails of that artist for generations. Yep. Um, Specifically via blocking everybody from being able to create with it. Anyway, it's just, yeah, that, that like kept, I don't know. That just, you made me think of that when you were talking about their localization choices. They, they care about that stuff, right? Like, like Capcom localization team legitimately is one of the best in the business. And I like, it's there were people saying, "Oh, you can't pander to your non-existent audience uh, to this non-existent audience for their non-existent money." Meanwhile, if you go check out the YouTube pages of the people complaining about this stuff, they started talking about Japanese games nine months ago when when the when the like you know. Uh, Japan is superior because they let us coom to games thing first became like a, a thing. And before that, all they fucking talk about is superhero games and Madden and Call of Duty. They're the fucking frat boy douchebags that we weebs have been, you know, ha- have been in opposition to since the PS2 days when we knew that Persona was better than than fucking Madden or whatever, the the gamers of actual taste, and now they're pretending like they're actually part of this fandom when they've probably never picked up one of these games in their lives. Um, yeah. and, and it's... <laughs> it It's, you know, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating because they... They, like go after localizers for trying to appeal to the sensitivities of, of different markets and trying to like get as much money for the product they're selling as possible, which is what all localization boils down to. Like if you think people are localizing stuff with a political agenda, there are a few cases where that is true. <laughs> Why did you do that, Jello Apocalypse? <laughs> Absolutely one of the stupidest things ever. But guess but, what? It didn't make it in any way. So st- yeah, yeah. The, the, they didn't let him do that because they knew that it would impact their sales, right? L- like at the end of the day, he bragged about all that stuff that he did and it didn't actually make it into the to the dub. Yeah. Because 
You know, the, but damn, did that fuel things for a while. Yeah. But yeah, there, there's only like a few examples of stuff being changed. And, and like in most cases, even the examples they bring up, like, um, you know, the Maid Dragon So much thing. Fire Emblem, too. I, fi- I mean... Like, How dare they add personality to Fire Emblem text that makes sense in certain languages? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Fire Emblem stuff... They're changing a lot in those localizations, but that, it's not even for political purposes. I mean, they're not there. changing. It's just trying to sell the game to people. I mean, I mean, you're thinking about Fire Emblem Heroes, where they changed the touching thing. I, I mean, no, that that the annoying Twitter people frequently pull up um, like comparisons of Fire Emblem characters' dialogue, where they are like, well, no, here's the super stiff translation where it says, I understand, but they made her say, I totally get it. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, yeah, just people, shit like that. That doesn't. People talking matter. in, in, yeah, in like. Yeah, I'm not talking about the touching thing. The, 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 I do agree, actually, with, unfortunately, every once in a while, I do agree that it was fucking stupid of them to change the Fire Emblem Heroes. But they're, they're, or not heroes. Why am I, heroes is the mobile game. Yeah, um, uh, fates, fates, fates. No, it's fates. Yeah, yeah. Fates. They changed the whole like you can you can rub them in fates. They changed that so you can only like touch their face or whatever. But and there's some conversations where that like they like that was censorship, but they never bring that up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they never bring that up potentially because they've never played a Fire Emblem game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you would think that they would bring up the fact that you can't do the touch your waifu titties, waifu touching <laughs> mini games, which also, I mean. Like, one of the big, like, eye-openers for me, it was, like, a few years ago. We were it was, it was the, a long time ago. Yeah, I we, know you're going to We were yeah. at the Anime Awards. We were talking to... I forget who Just we were talking to. some people to. from Crunchyroll. Yeah. Um, but, like, we were talking about, like, mobile games where they took out the sexy waifu parts. It was specifically the, um, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon game? Right, right, yeah. So that had, like, a, a waifu molesting mode. And the reason... <laughs> Don't that, call it that, because it's not that. It's, it's not. It's, that's, like... Calling the fire emblem thing. Okay, uh, uh, fondling. Yeah, I yeah, mean, uh, fondling. yeah, you sound so against it. No, no, you yeah, would have used right. it if it were there. I would. I absolutely would have. I love. I love that stuff in games. But um, the reason that they take that stuff out of like the the dungeon uh, oh, man, is it wrong to pick up girls? I know. Actually. I keep almost saying <laughs> that. Is it wrong? Much. It was Hestia. It was Hestia. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the reason that they take that stuff out is because they want people to play those games in public. Because that's free marketing. You see somebody playing a mobile game on the bus or the the BART train or whatever, then you're more likely to play it yourself, right? Um, and you, people are less likely to play those kind of games here in public. Yeah, if they've got the... Or in the West, in yeah, public. Yeah, and if they've got the jiggle thing, because they're more concerned about that and less concerned about gratuitous violence, which is which does get censored like crazy all the time in Japan... Right, yep. they're, they're yep. like there's so many games where blood gets and cut. anime too though. Yeah, right? yeah, um, or gets the turned fucking. Into the, <laughs> I was gonna say the black gradient of of, you know, where they just like cock block you with a black gradient on. It happens all the time in JoJo. It's I, really bad in JoJo and in Yaoi. I was just gonna say Seven Deadly Sins or that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like very, <laughs> when it's, it's that's different. That's literally that's, just. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like like. There's different standards that they're trying to meet, and they're trying to sell stuff to as many people as possible, and that's what localization is. It's trying to make something palatable to a different market, and, you know, while it sucks to hear as people who are hardcore dedicated to Japanese stuff and and we love it, they're not making translations for us. We are a tiny part of the market. And to be honest, I think you'll agree with me with this, but um, if you're that bothered by it, learn Japanese. Yeah. If you're that bothered and think that it's not for you, just learn Japanese and shut the fuck up and go play it that way. Yeah. And like, but what really bugs me, right, is we've gotten to this point where, where people are straight up making stuff up. Like I saw somebody saying, we didn't how, know how good we had it with Keikaku means plan. <laughs> Oh my god, I remember like, seeing that. Are you stupid or something? Like, for years, at least you could rely on people in the anime community, whether they were sub or dub, to at least make fun of, like, awkward dog shit translations that expect you to pick up a Japanese-to-English dictionary and, like, 
learn on the fly a bunch of cultural stuff, right? You know what I do miss, but, though? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just... But now, but now we're in... Like, like they're defending... AI translation and stuff like that. Which we will get to in one sec. I just wanted to say, you know what I do miss that we have lost in like the very localization thing that doesn't matter, but I do miss it is um, honorifics. Yeah. For some reason, they don't put those in subs anymore. They don't put if they called them blank Kun or blank Chan. Yeah, that, and I actually that is miss actually... that. Why does nobody complain about that? I miss that. That is something that they have localized out of subs, especially like Crunchyroll and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know if High Dive keeps it. Um, I don't pay enough attention, but yeah, like I, you know, I understand it from the perspective of you want as low friction as possible for the Attack on Titan casuals, yeah. which is you got to understand. When they're localizing Ace Attorney, they're not trying to get people who are already in visual novels. They're trying to get people who want to see a Law and Order game, right? They want to play, which tonally there is a no, lot. No, no, they want to play Gay Lawyer Simulator. Get it right. Yeah, okay, but you know, you know what I mean. Like, like they're they're, you know, they want like a crime drama. They don't necessarily want all these cultural specifics, right? Yeah. And with you know, like they're trying to get the audience that likes Attack on Titan and My Hero Academia. Because that's where all the money is. And that's why they cut out the San and Sama. Even though that like actually does take away information from the story. Where you know we don't have that in English at all. The, the use of honorifics to, to, to like reflect status. And show how much people are respecting each other. Like in, in the JJK dub and you know subs... The the fact that that um, oh my god Isakuru we haven't talked about around calling himself Ore all the time yeah I mean is... that is completely lost but oh my god we haven't talked about my descent into JJK hell oh, it's, we it's, it's been that long since we last podcasted that we didn't cover my descent into JJK hell well that'll be the next podcast oh, we will fine okay, I. We I'm will... sorry, you said Pookie's name. I'm <laughs> I'm locked in. You can you, for the next one, Yazzie will bring out all her fuas. You will see. It's going to be a history lesson on fuas. It, and... It's just going to be a cultural uh, 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 crash course, a cultural clash, cultural crash course. Oh my god, into fuas. And also a little bit of how how like crazy and the JJK she's gotten. We will be talking about JJK a little bit more, but I later. Sorry. I yeah. just you just you just reminded me that it's you guys, we haven't seen you since I fell into a rabbit hole. I can't believe you kept JJK from me for this long. And Rakugo Shinju, that's the oh, next we'll get one there that next. Get um, anyway, sorry, but, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. So like, you know, the the honorifics and like very specific things like how character like what personal uh is it pronouns, pronoun? I guess. Yeah, I guess it is a pronoun. It's oh what? my god, oh my god, pronouns. Oh, no, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, what personal pronouns somebody uses, whether they use uh, Ore or Boku or Watashi, or, you know. Yeah. That stuff does get lost, and that is interesting, but it's not as interesting to the, again, the Attack on Titan casual, casual audience yeah. as... Uh, you know, people getting punched through a wall and... Um, in the end, that's where the money is and that's where the user growth is. Yeah. Is those huge... those Making yeah. those series as user-friendly as possible. Yeah, and, you know, everything's got to be growing all the time. You know, yeah, you exactly. can't just serve a niche audience. You got to show your shareholders that you're making more money year over year. Um, and you That's know, how good things go to die, by the way. Yeah, that is how good things <laughs> go to die. <laughs> Investors um, is where good artistic things go to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Investment ruins everything. It's true. True. Um, but yeah, so so like that's the actual issue. The the people putting a political agenda into stuff one way or another is extremely minor. And, but it's all it's all people talk about with any of this shit. And it leads to this brain poison where they start defending AI translations, which aren't fucking readable. Oh my god, I cannot believe that they have fallen that far, that they're willing to like celebrate and like praise 
dog shit translation. Like it's great. Like I want to strap every single one of those people down and make them watch the first episode of that brothers anime yeah. that Country Real published with the AI subtitles. So, so like, here's the thing. I right? want to strap them down and be like, did you like this? No, I, <laughs> I, I did strap them down. I literally did in my last, in my Disney plus video, I, I have like a section where I'm like, you know, Crunchy rolls leaning into AI translation, and that's terrible. And I show the clip where where the guy is the like, what, "What kind of breakfast is this? What are, what you are doing is a carcinogen." And you know, we can just play the clip here so you can see I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> Like, this is the dialogue that they're using, and there are comments below that video that presumably looked at the screen and saw those subtitles, who are like, well, at least that's better than, you know, the Maid Dragon thing where they said patriarchy. Oh my and God, it's you, not. You, it's not. That, like, the patriarchy thing was an earnest... Seven years ago, by the way. It was seven years ago. Yeah. If, you're, if your only examples are from it's fucking a, seven years ago, you Yeah, need... but, but aside from that, it, like, that was an earnest attempt to translate the context of the scene that came off as kind of cringy. If, kind of. Yeah, but, you know, like... I still defend the Nagatoro sus, though. That was a good localization. Yeah, Nag Nagatoro saying sus is good. Um, some of the memes speak in... Uh, the devil is a part timer. Really, is not. But uh, but that but like that's the thing. These are all products of their time. Yeah, they're products of their time, and they're earnest attempts to like get across the context of what the characters are saying. Because something that you learn when you're in Japan is like you can say the same word, and it can mean a completely different thing depending on the context. Um, and context matters so much. When you're when you're speaking in Japanese, God, bringing up the devil is a part timer though. Yeah, you just no. like you just fucking. I'm sorry, you just reminded me of how hard that was to watch, both because of the language, the like alternate language thing. You know, yeah, it was a shame. I really wanted to like that series. I love Reverse Isekai, but like, yeah, I yeah, know there's so many like. I do think it's interesting though that none of those people ever bring that up. Yeah, because I mean, a they weren't watching anime back then. Yeah, B, a lot of them don't think that, you know, 2013 4 chanisms are... No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was just, like, casual memes. It wasn't, it wasn't like, deep memes. It was just, like, casual, like, sus-level memes. Yeah. And, I mean, but the problem was it was every couple lines. Um, it was, yeah, like, actually yeah. every couple lines. But uh, interesting the, that know, they never bring that up. Seeing people say stuff like, can I has cheeseburger? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, it's like... It's just, like, yeah. But it's... They never bring that one up. Because they weren't watching anime. <laughs> at that time. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're all recently into anime. Or not into anime at all. Maybe their actual uh, hobby is just arguing I'm... on the internet. Mm -hmm. And they don't... I, I said their actual hargy. <laughs> their actual hobby... Oh my god, Jack, arguing. you literally can't speak. <laughs> their actual hobby is arguing on the internet. And it really doesn't matter what the topic it's is. It's being so offended just... on the internet, specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Their hobby is being offended on the internet. Right. I was going to go back to the, the Never Knows Best video. We right. Sorry. Sorry. He, he pointed out something very fascinating, which is they've started using terms like gaslighting. They've started, you know, jumping on people who are like, you can't be racist against white people and saying, you're a racist. And like, they keep throwing racist, racist, racist at the people they don't like. Because like, they're adopting snowflake, snowflake language. Yeah. It's, it's... Yeah. I, for one, think we should call those people snowflakes more. They, that's they, what they and are. And professional victims, but... Yeah. I mean, especially certain ones who are asking for donations constantly, like, but, you know, literally professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Victims, yeah. Grifters, but, if you would. But, yeah, no, it's... It's, it, it's, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because there's actual problems with localization that we can't fucking talk about. And and there are people actively... John Weary, I'm coming for you! Yes, we will get to JJK. The JJK terrorist himself. I just, I just want to cut off the AI thing before we... Right, 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 yeah. You know, like, like... I got my fucking targets set on bitching about JJK. But, yes. 
AI is ruining so many, like, you know, there's, there's so many shows that have either AI translated subtitles or AI and then a human check the subtitles. And did a of bad just, job. Yeah, instead of just having the human... Well, I mean, the AI does a bad job, and then the human has to fix all their mistakes, and, and they have I, to... I mean, it's still, I feel like... I mean, it's harder than just translating it yourself, right? And it, it's leading to worse translations. It's leading to really stiff, awkward stuff. And the worst of all is the other big news story this week. Today. Like, just today, today. Literally just today. today. This morning when we woke up. Um, so there's this company called Orin. I'll, I'll pull up the, the article about them, yeah. Um, these motherfuckers, these worthless... Yeah, so they're, they're out to solve the issue of piracy by getting manga translations to you sooner... Orange Ink is what they're called. Orange Ink. Orange Ink. By with translating this, it all with, with this AI. With this ugly motherfucker. With this oh. ugly little piece of shit. Uh, they just announced that they uh, uh, they managed to fundraise 2.92 billion yen. In which, venture capital fund. Which is 19.5 million USD currently. And their, their like, business plan is they're going to take 500 currently uh, running, not translated well, manga. Well, no, they say that they are able to reach a capacity. I have like a little thing here. Their proprietary system uses their localization operation process, enabling a capacity for Japanese to English localization, localization of up to 500 manga volumes per month. 500 manga volumes per month is what they're saying. They're is just what they're promising. Pump through Google Translate and charge you five bucks a month. I mean, to is read. it? Fi- I don't know how much it is a month. I, I mean, I, they, yeah, they haven't. They said have it. some kind of monthly fee. Yeah, we don't know how much it's going it to be, be more. and it might be per volume. Um, but they are apparently bringing an app to the U.S. starting this summer for their AI slop. Yeah, literally. and I feel so fucking bad for any author whose shit gets picked up by them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, isn't Bookworm getting no no, no, no um, so far I don't think they have any worthwhile titles um, that they no no Bookworm about. was the one that the, like the Bookworm manga or something was one I, of the I ones don't, that I don't they... know. There was there well, maybe was, the, maybe that was a different one. Yeah, I don't know, but no, there have not been any like specific um, series. I don't think yet, but um, yeah, the fact that they're saying this is going to curb piracy. Are you stupid or something? Yeah. Like, like I'm sorry. I I I don't care if my favorite series is picked up by them. I'm not going to pay you for it because the fan translations will be better, yeah. even the ones that are fucking like start as one language and then get get taken to another like they start as japanese and then they get translated to spanish and then they get translated to english from the spanish translations i'd rather read that like he, like, like the thing is even if the because this will probably unfortunately make a lot of fan translators give up on these series because you know it, it's much harder to keep a fan translation up if there's an official release even if it's not really an official release yep right but you know it gives them a stronger copyright clay, case to dmca claim down which is i think the real purpose of, of doing this shit maybe um maybe you know because i like i yeah maybe they think they're going to curb piracy by owning all the licenses and going after everybody but I, like who who's going to pay for this right who is going hopefully to pay, nobody who's going to pay any amount of money when you can literally just get the raw and point Google Lens at it and get the exact same product. With, frankly, the same level of lettering. Let's put up on screen an example of their fucking lettering, which I think is AI as well. Yeah. I mean, the one, like, the one thing is it won't be vertically oriented because Google Lens will vertically orient some of the Yeah, text, but still, but at least it's free. Yeah, it's free, right? Like, you're getting a marginally easier reading experience that still reads like shit the, but at least you're not paying the fucking yeah at least AI you're not paying the, the butchers to like, do it like fuck man like like greedy who is gonna pay for that hopefully nobody i really truly hope nobody yeah. like i actually hope i mean we know that all these like anti-localizer people are not gonna pay for it yeah I, yeah no they're, <laughs> they're just not saying, gonna pay for it and they hopefully manga yeah hopefully anybody with any level of intelligence won't pay for it because they'll realize that they're wasting their money like but yeah like it's like, bad it's bad I, I i really cannot their lettering is offensive i can't get over that yeah it just crosses over to the borders yeah, look, of look, the page or the the it, that is i think that that the lettering is done by ai too which... yeah no the, i i when i was googling this 
earlier today there was there's like white papers by this guys researching how to do automatic typesetting and it looks like shit it crosses over into the margins of the page or over the side of uh, the speech bubble it's not centered not designed for readability it has random line breaks in the middle of words that just don't make sense um and yeah it, it's It's a terrible product. I don't see why anybody would ever pay for it. Uh, that, yeah, I really can't express enough that I hope no one pays for it. Please. Yeah. I mean, we again, we already know that the anti-localizer people won't pay for it anyway. Yeah, they're, um, they're just showing up to say, oh, man, to be all these localizers <laughs> to be are going to lose their jobs. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I like that, that, that news of that orange company making so much fucking money. Mostly, I think, on the idea, like, they were... Almost definitely touting the whole, like, this is going to curb piracy thing. We, you know, we don't know what they said to get all that money, but I'm sure that they were really pushing that whole piracy thing. In their thing, they also say, did, like, only 2% of manga um, published in, the, in Japan makes it to English. And? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that kind of sucks from the perspective of someone who's always submitting a bunch of things to those... Um, what do you want us to, to, to pick up next surveys? But like, that's me. Um, yeah. but like, I mean, that really, su- like you were showing me that, that cute manga about the adopted. Yeah. Daughter. I've been reading a lot of, um, not localized manga. Um, or not, but like not officially translated manga. Yeah. So, so, um, and that's only got like five chapters out because of, you know, yeah, nobody's fan subbing slow. Yeah. But, um, Good fan subbing is slow. Dog shit AI translation is fast, and you can get it f- but for free. Frankly, again, I'd rather I'd rather read fan translations that use like machine translation. Yeah. Because at least then nobody's paying making any it. money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> at least yeah, at least then I'm not paying for it. You know, of course I would prefer not to read that stuff, but like. Yeah. If, you, if you're not going to get an alternative because all the localizers are losing their jobs and we're not getting good translations of manga anymore, maybe you'll have to. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's the really depressing thought. It's grim. Right? It's fucking grim. It is. It Because, like, it's not like you're going to get, you know, to the anti-localizer people who do read manga, because they're, I, you know... Yeah, uh, we can't discredit that some of these people not, do. Some of them are not tourists, right? They're they're the people who were going on. A lot of the people who were going on, on about Warhammer last week and Stellar Blade the week before and Capcom the week before that are, right? But you know they are doing that tourist thing to bring in people from each fandom to their like ideological bubble. And like, I need you to understand if you're somebody who's like upset about the dragon maid thing in the grand scheme of things what you are doing is a carcinogen being the default for fucking all of our subtitles is so much worse yeah that was yeah and and anybody who's telling you otherwise definitely does not watch anime or read manga straight up yeah i'm gonna say that yeah like like they're only interested in internet arguments and scoring points. And being a victim. Yeah. And and being a dumb crybaby victim, loser, idiot, dumbass. Being a cry bully. That's no cry baby. Cry no cry quiet, bully. Cry baby. They don't they're they're babies. They babies. But they they weaponize. That would hurt their feelings. Yeah. They, that would hurt their feelings. Let's call them babies. They are they are little babies. Little cry babies. No, little cry babies. But they you know they, they little cry babies who refuse to learn a language that would rather be quiet babies. Yeah. And and also just... Yeah. yeah, if you care that much, learn Japanese and do the translations yourself for your purist group. And don't interfere with efforts to give people readable, watchable, enjoyable, translated media because they don't want to have to go through learning Japanese. That's like... That's the thing, right? You know, when people say... Keikaku means plan. We had it so good. That's like, do you want to 
go back and forth to a Japanese to English dictionary or have 20 to, times in or the middle have of watching it, an episode. Or have That's to pause it, pause it to read whatever the little note at the top is. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't a, read the sub and the note at the top. Yeah, pause it to read the annotation like 20, 20 times in the middle of an episode. Is that a better way to experience Made Dragon than have like it. mostly good jokes and then at a kind of cringe she line. Says, Patriarch. She says something kind of cringe. Like, like, would you rather be able to understand what they're saying? Would you rather breakfast be a carcinogen or have to hear a cringe joke once? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, it's... <sighs> oh, my God. This is off topic, but I just... I'm, I am so sorry. I just realized I think I have spent about 75% of this podcast looking up here. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> You keep doing I, I train myself to not do it like... I, I, I just... I see myself and I'm like, oh, <laughs> guess me. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, it's kind of hard to rant without Yazzie here, but... Yeah, it's just very, very frustrating to see people out there acting like this garbage. Please put example of AI translated garbage is in any way comparable to even the worst localizations. And like, you gotta understand, accuracy has never been the top priority and it's not going to be because they're trying to reach normies, not enthusiasts. The enthusiasts are a captured market and most of us have already decided if we're gonna pirate or we're going to go to official sources, and the only thing that's going to drive us away from official sources is if the translation quality dips like fucking crazy and stuff becomes unwatchable. But the, the casual viewer who got into anime through Attack on Titan doesn't care. They just want to watch something that they can enjoy without having to think too much about it. But yeah, so... When I when I think back to you know when I was when I was a Wii gamer, uh, playing JRPGs on PS One, um, and later you know GameCube, Dreamcast stuff like that, a lot of them had really bad stilted translations because of the character limit. Like that was a specific technological issue where console RPGs were just better in Japanese because you can squeeze more information into a sentence with kanji than you can in something that has to use Roman letters. English, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah Roman letters. You know, like, like it, you can just squeeze more information into the same amount of pixels, period. And for several generations, there was this back and forth with having to compromise on either the accuracy of the translation or giving it actual personality. Um, and there's this game called Skies of Arcadia Legends, one of the greatest, Ar or Skies of Arcadia, I played it as Legends because I played it on GameCube. One of the greatest games I've ever played, one of the greatest RPGs of its generation, and one of the best localizations of that time. It's just got so much personality in the text, very enjoyable to read. And the way that they made it was they took the scripts in Japanese, they got the gist of what the characters were saying, and then they threw out the literal translations and re-scripted it to make sense within the animation of the cutscene and have like a good natural flow in English. And if you play that and play almost any PS1 RPG translated by Squaresoft, the difference is night and day. You know, like, it, it's, it's so much more readable, it's got so much more personality, and while I would very much like to, now that we don't have those, those strict limits of how many characters you can fit into a text box, while I would very much like to now see a version of Skies of Arcadia where they don't translate the, the wine that everybody's drinking is made up magic fruit juice, because they don't want to, they don't want to get. A, they don't want to up their rating. rating. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, while I would very much like that, when I'm playing retro games, I 
absolutely prefer that looser approach to something more accurate. And if I'm going to, to get the accurate experience, I think I'm just going to learn Japanese over here. Um, if we have time, yeah. Hopefully we have time soon. We will. I mean, we will. I mean... We haven't, but, you know. Um, I, I, we, we've, we're about an hour and a half in, so I do think we should uh, switch gears a bit because we're kind of getting to the point of circles. Um, yeah, but, so I, I just wanted to hit on one last thing about translation, which is the actual problem that we were going to talk about right before you left. Which well, is, no, I, we'll do that in a second. I mean, sort of mean we'll, we'll do that in a second. I want to have a little intermission story time. If you could hold my microphone for me. Okay. Carefully. You can't wobble it. So I have a quick story time. I have to, I'm going to eat a rice ball because I haven't eaten yet. Today I got distracted earlier, and I haven't, I haven't eaten yet today. And the antibiotics are fucking with my tummy, so i got to get some food in them. Anyway, I have to tell you guys a story. So to open rice balls, if you never have, right, the convenience store rice balls, you, like, pull this tab. It's hard to do on camera. And you bring this up. I ripped it a bit. And then you like pull off each side. I'm not going to do it on camera because sometimes I fuck it up. Oh, that side worked. And then you pull off. Oh, that side ripped. Whatever. And then you have a rice ball. And then you have a rice ball where the, the seaweed was not touching the rice, so it's not soggy. The very first time I had one of these was on my exchange trip when I was uh, like 16 years old, 15 years old. Uh, my host family picked me up from the airport, and we were driving back, and they're like, hey, let's stop for snacks at the convenience store. I picked up one of the fabled Japanese rice balls, and I opened it by taking off the sticker, fully unwrapping it, taking the piece of rice, setting it aside, and, like, tearing open the packaging. Not the way you're supposed to do it, right? I really complicated it. I really struggled because it's not made to be open that way, and they just sat there and watched me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say shit. They just sat at the table being like, yep. Anyway, that's my story. That's your story. That's my story about how it's got a very easy three-step system to open it. Very clever. And I unwrapped it. It took me a good two minutes to unwrap. And they didn't say shit. Keep talking. Um, yeah. Uh, you just reminded me of something I wanted to talk about in our move to Japan. Because I wanted to give some people... Pro tips, because there was one other thing that happened. Oh my god! Um, and I don't, I don't want to talk about this, but it's you important. Talked about all your medical issues. I should talk about mine. <laughs> um, like a couple weeks into our move, I got extremely, painfully constipated. I, I was Hank Hill. I was no, I wasn't Hank Hill. No, no, no. no. Um, but just like, there's no fucking fiber. In, in the food here, and you have IBS. So, bad combo. Yeah, that was, that so, was not um, good. Um, if, if so, you've I got to take a magnesium pill to, to get yeah, some. Yeah, but also, food. like, you've now picked up five mini. Yeah. This is, this is my number one pro tip for anyone moving or live or on a longer trip to Japan. Yeah, even a couple weeks. Um, yeah. If you got one of them sensitive tummies. If you got a sensitive tummy, pick up five mini. Or Coke Plus, which is like Coke Zero, but with an added fiber supplement. Um, it'll don't, save your life. Don't end up like Jeff. Yeah. The, the diet here is very different, and rice does not give you the kind of fiber that you need to pass all the rice that you're eating. Um, so anyway. Yeah. Just, just an important tip. Um, very important. <laughs> No, unironically. Yeah, unironically. Uh, and I'm, I'm still trying to fill a bit of air while Yazzie finishes her rice ball because the next point about localization is, is very, very... She's more passionate about it than I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it does relate to her uh, slow descent into JJ. It's, Why are you... It's salmon. Salmon flakes. <laughs> um... Do not perceive me. <laughs> you say as you hold up food to the camera and like... Um, yeah, so while we're talking about like localization, one big problem is AI, right? That is that is tanking the quality of a lot of stuff. But another big problem is not localizers injecting their politics or whatever. Again, that does not happen very often and... When it does, 
if it's a threat to the business, it immediately gets squashed, as we saw with the whole Jello apocalypse debacle. But the big problem is localizer, localizers who just don't really give a shit. Um, and Jujutsu Kaisen, the Jujutsu Kaisen manga, the, it kind of what I just did with my phone is what's been happening every week with the Jujutsu Kaisen Simul Pub for years because it got handed over to because um, the first guy had to be a fucking right. That's what happened. The first guy was a first localizer. Was? Yeah. So oh, geez. yeah, that's I didn't why he even got, know that part. Yeah. Yeah. So the guy who who translated everything up to Shibuya uh, got kicked off for, for good crimes. Reasons. Um, um, and, and then they they then, had another guy. No, they come. didn't. It was just John Weary. John Weary took over. At, right. Yeah, okay. John Weary just took over. Um, there there was somebody else. I don't want to like, you know, talk we too much about people. Talk too much yeah. About um, but uh, John Weary took over, and since then, has legitimately, arguably, I think, been ruining the manga. Yeah. And nobody's talking about that. None of these oh the problem with localization people are are have even a peep to say about one of the biggest manga in both Japan and the West right now. Yeah. Right? Being extremely inaccurately translated. This is not like being picky, right? With like, oh, I don't like that they added a little, like they made that character say like totally instead of just saying a sentence, right? Like, I don't like that they added slang to this. He is incorrect. Yeah. And it is getting published in print, permanently, incorrectly. Half of the reason people say they don't understand the JJK manga or the power systems are is because, because the, of him. Yeah, the, the explanations are like both hyper-literal and translations. And somehow word salad at the same time. Yeah. Like, so I don't know. I never read Demon Slayer, um, but he was also the translator on Demon Slayer. And he did a good job. No, no. Not Demon enough. Slayer, he was also committing... Translation terrorism on Demon Slayer, as right, I know, it was Comey can't communicate. Yeah, he's he also he actively on Comey can't communicate, and he does a great job on that. So it's not a skill thing. Uh, he just doesn't seem to give a shit, yeah. and is actively harming and pushing people away from reading the official translation. And it's crazy. Like one of the biggest and easiest non-spoiler. This is no spoilers if you watch the anime examples, right? is there's one point when Kenjaku is talking about both Gojo and Ghetto's skills, and he says, in, in John Weary's translation, it says that Gojo can use cursed spirit manipulation. No, he can't. No, no, he can't, right? And more recently, it's hard to put this... We're not going to show this on screen because it's spoilers, but it's not spoilers to talk about. He takes things like... Shrine and malevolent shrine, which are two different things. So, right? so they, s s without spoiling things, Sukuna has his domain, which is malevolent shrine, and, and then he has a, a technique, a technique which is called shrine. Right. Two different things. Two different things. Right. Uh, that. So, so most recently, in very recent chapters, he went and translated stuff that says shrine as malevolent shrine. And I compared that, I think quite, I think it's a pretty accurate comparison to say that's like taking something that says this guy is a Saiyan and translating it as this guy is a super Saiyan. Yeah. That's like the equivalent of that for people who don't know anything about JJK. And like, he also... So yeah, he called them both malevolent trying. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like... So, which are wildly different things. And at one point, I mean, he's also the, the criminal behind Nai win versus no. Um, yeah. which everybody knows that the Nied win meme. Uh, he originally translated that as just no, and then there was enough outrage that they changed that. Mm -hmm. But, like, they won't... There's been outrage about the other stuff, like, within the fandom. Yeah, there's... Another thing he did recently, um, which I think is not spoilers, was he took a line that said, Maharaga, which is that, you know, the character with the... the, the he, you've seen him in season two, the giant thing that, that Megumi killed himself over. Um, mm -hmm. He said... Maharaga, sorry, it said in Japanese, Maharaga adapted to this attack. And in the English one, it says, Malevolent Shrine adapted to this attack. Just. Those, you can't even argue that, like, oh, those are, that's just one extra kanji in it. 
It, it said it's a completely different, different word. word. It, it, it said Goku and he put Vegeta. Like, yeah, absolutely like, baffling. There's, and nobody who is complaining about localization. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, th- there's another really bad one recently, which was um, Gojo was explaining. Oh. Yeah, so Gojo's like doing an interview and he's like, so, and, and specifically what he's saying is, so why can't I use Black Flash on command using my six eyes, right? And John Weary translated the, the word for use on command as you to just use so so go the translation was implying gojo can't black flash which is not yeah. true yeah it said it, he made it say why can't i black flash well where we just saw multiple chapters where bro back to back it five times like this guy is actively changing the meaning of the manga right he's not making a cringe joke he is actively changing the meaning of a massive manga and it's getting published permanently that way, right? Which means that in a couple of years when someone's picking the manga up and there is no thread on Twitter on their timeline to tell them what's wrong, they just think it makes no fucking sense. They just think this is what happened and none of the localization people are whining about this. Yeah, because they don't give a shit. They don't they don't actually care the translation. They just care about people with different politics from them getting fired. That's all they that's all they want. Yeah. Um, um, I'd, if you have read the Demon Slayer manga and have any opinions on the translation, I'd love to hear because when I posted about being like, okay, for real, this is a problem now. He is a problem. A couple people replied being like, yeah, he was a problem on Demon Slayer too. So I'd be, I, I don't give a shit about Demon Slayer. So I'd be curious if you read the manga, to, about if you've read the Viz translation of the manga. And what what is extra messed up is the fact that there's somebody who has to do basically corrections every week. There, there is a person on Twitter who also translates manga professionally who essentially has to put out corrections for it every single week. They've got a giant Google Doc, chapter by chapter, with all of the corrections. And that's fucked up. And like, like, at that point, what the fuck are you guys doing? I, I make a joke about what blackmail does he have on Viz execs? That you have this much fandom outrage, at least, right? And you have this many, like, black and white errors, not, eh, patriarchy, I don't like that line. You have, like, black and white errors, like, yeah. no questions asked errors, wrong character names. Removing, removing context. Yeah. Removing, like, m- making sentences unreadable sometimes. And, and they have gone back, they changed a couple of them, like the Nide win, right? They changed that. So Viz is aware of it, and they just don't give a shit, right? So my joke that I'm just going to keep going off of the assumption of is that this guy's got hella blackmail on someone at Viz. Yeah. How is he still here? Either it's nepotism or he's got hella blackmail on somebody. The only thing I can think is like a real explanation. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being goofy. I'm the being goofy. Only, the only thing I can think is he's like locked into to the contract for it and because he hasn't like violated the moral clause of the contract by being he a gets to just be lazy drinker or whatever you want to say um, <laughs> he, he, yeah he just gets to coast we're gonna have to bleep you saying that earlier yeah, by the way that's fine that's, um, but people get what I mean but yeah like like he, yeah he gets he, to just coast yeah he gets to just coast and like I think I, I really think part of the problem because he also picked up Demon Slayer and you know I haven't read much of the Demon Slayer manga and I I'm, I'm remembering now the reason that I didn't read much of it is because it was just kind of boring and dry right I just didn't and, enjoy reading it and how much of that dryness do you think came from his word salad hyper literalness probably a like, lot in retrospect and yeah. and the 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 thing is I think he like I. I, can I say one thing? Sorry. I don't want it to seem like we are specifically attacking like him as a person. Yeah. Because he's done good work on Comey. Comey, right? Which is even more frustrating because it means he knows what he's doing. Um, yeah. And I don't want it to seem like we're doing what those fucking annoying culture war people do, right? Where they target somebody. Yeah. I, I don't, like, I, this is just an example of somebody who is well known for this problem. That's and, right. and, like, I think, you know... And I think I understand why he doesn't have any public social media. Yeah. I, like, I don't think the actual problem is John Weary. I think as the, a guy. I, as a guy. I think the problem 
is John Weary has to take jobs translating manga he doesn't give a shit about because just translating Comey really well does not pay his bills. Yeah, I mean, we don't know that. But, but, I mean, yeah, but I mean, so, from, somewhere along the line, he uh, he ended up on a manga that he clearly doesn't give a shit about, you know, and, and again. We, but we do know that, like, translators don't get paid very well. Yes. Like, straight up, they, yes. they just, the, the rates are awful. They've gotten worse specifically because of AI. And now a bunch of them are getting jobs fixing the mistakes of AI, right? Which is also leading to worse translations. But, you know, when you've only got so much time to do enough translating to pay your bills. And you've got one series you give a lot of shits about, and two series... Or you one. Don't give, or, Demon or, Slayer's or, over, yeah. Yeah, Demon Slayer's over, but I'm, I think he's translating other stuff right now. I, I, I don't know. I don't but know. you got another weekly series that you don't give any shits about. Obviously, you're going to p- devote all of your time to thinking up really good localizations for the one you care about and just throw the other one out the window, you know, just to, to get... To put food on the table. I also, this is just a nitpick, but the fan translations choose to follow Gege and his statement of gender neutrality on a couple characters, and John Weary doesn't. Yeah. John Weary doesn't choose to follow the interview where Gege said that Uruume doesn't have, it, it uses they, like, doesn't say, oh, Uruume uses they, them. Because there's no they, them in yeah, Japanese. Yeah, but... but Gege purposely does not use any gendered terms for U- Uruume, and for some reason, uh, John well, Weary just decided that Uruume is a she. Yeah. So that's a bit of a nitpick, but... Kind of an important one. Yeah. Kind um, of changing the meaning of a character, perhaps. Yeah. And, like, we, we do know that, that um, Gege has the woke mind virus based off of uh, the scene where Miguel calls out Gojo. Gojo for his microaggressions. But also we have, we have, um, um, but maybe that's why they're Sorry. not complaining. <laughs> I just, we, all, we also have the worst character casually dropping transphobia and everyone just being like Panda, 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 <laughs> Panda with Kirara. Wait, did you just call Panda the worst character? Yes. That's who who else do you nominate? That's what I thought. Um No, that you mm-mm. No, no. There's Who's worse? Like half the people at the Kyoto school. No. They're completely no. useless. No. <laughs> it, it's not a matter of how useless they are. They're all likable characters who all serve a purpose. And have character designs. <laughs> <laughs> or just a panda. Man, it's so disappointing to get panda merch when you go buy like a random, you know, when you buy like a blind thing and it's fucking panda. Because it's not even whether or not you like the character. It's a panda. I like panda. Not his transphobia. I just like him. I like panda. Well, <laughs> then you can have all my, my randomized panda merch. Thank you. Don't pretend you want it, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, um... John Weary is causing actual... Okay, how about this? Let's drop his name. The person who translates JJK, so because it's not a personal attack on you and... Yeah. The guy who translates JJK is the perfect example of a serious problem that, that none of these localized crybabies actually give a shit about. Yeah. And maybe they're even in favor of it because he changed pronouns in a way that they like. No, they don't, they don't give a shit. That's the thing. They don't give a shit. I mean, yeah, they're not reading. They, yeah, they're, they're, they don't give a shit. And that, that doesn't, yeah, that, they, don't, they don't give a shit. And it, it's just another example of you don't actually care. Yeah, you're not really part of the fandom. But also, what can we do about this? Like, actually, I don't know what can be done. It's crazy to me. Like I said earlier... It's just being published that way. It's just being printed that way permanently, forever. Well, I mean, we like it's hard to even have a conversation about because it because it gets drowned out by people still complaining about the fucking Dragon Maid thing. Yeah, and like people, it also gets filtered out by people, right? Because they just assume that it's another one of those arguments and that it's another nitpick or another personal attack or whatever. Yeah, because of those annoying crybabies who won't shut the fuck up. It gets filtered. What do we do about this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, that is literally like, what I tweeted. I tweeted being like, okay, 
it's not funny anymore. I'm not joking. Like, haha, John Weary committing translation terrorism. Actually, though, what can we do about this? Because to me, it is crazy that an absolute powerhouse of a manga is arguably getting ruined, but more importantly, losing a bunch of paid readers because it is just unfortunately better to read the fan translations yeah because they actually well i mean the thing follow is, the series the thing every the week fans... every just real fast every week feels like it's his first time seeing the series every single week feels like he's working off some fucking chart of previous words they've used like every yeah. week feels like he's a guest translator yeah it's and the, I mean, the one week that did have good translation oh my God, was, praise. was when they brought in. <laughs> yeah, the, so, so I don't want to yeah. spoil anything, but 236, you guys have no idea how happy I am. I feel like I used up all of my good luck ever just having him not translate That's not 236. True. You just won two huge who <gasps> was in a We country. can't, we gotta, oh, we gotta, oh my God, oh my God. That, we'll, we'll, we'll sign out with that story. But, um, but like, oh God, I'm so happy that he just happened to be on vacation during arguably what would have been the most argument filled chapter. And the no most spoilers. Chapter 236. Uh, uh, oh my God. When I, when I saw that name on there, I was like, <laughs> yeah, the the guy running the Twitter thread full of corrections got or, to translate. I don't know their I don't know their gender. They, they, or the, the, the person, person, yeah, I don't know their gender. Yeah, the person running the Twitter thread full of corrections got, got to, to translate to thirty six, and it was <sighs> monumentally better. You, you can, yeah. I'm gonna turn Night the AC. I turned the AC off, but I think I got to turn I it back on. Got to turn it back on. Um, but yeah. anyway, I think we're kind of wrapping this one up. Yeah. No. I like as for what can be done, I really don't know, right? Because the I really think that the problem is. That, like, it takes a huge amount of work to translate stuff. And people aren't getting paid enough for that work to make a living. And, like, despite the fact that Viz is the biggest comic publisher in North America, period. The most profitable, hands down. And the most powerful. They have no incentive to pay these people more and get better work. Because, you know, they, it just improves their profit margins not to. And, like, the thing is, the fans who are going to read the, the proper fan translations are still buying the manga just to have it in their collection a lot of the time, right? I don't know. Like, what's messed up is that I have to read the fan translations. Yeah. Like, I read the, the Jump one. I have a Jump subscription, right? Yeah. I read the Jump one, and then I go and read the TCB one after because it makes more sense. And there's stuff that, yeah, there's like, stuff I'll look you at literally it. don't understand from yeah. reading the... Oh, my God. That motherfucker made me think I couldn't read. He, he, I was like, I, the, the amount of times I had to go back a couple pages and re-re-re-re-read something and re-read something um, was insane. I really felt like I didn't get it. I really th I did, I thought that I was just kind of stupid and had no reading comprehension until I found out that it, I wasn't crazy and that these sentences made no sense. Yeah, like... I, I honestly think a lot of the reason people think that JJK falls off at the culling game, but is also that they think it's the confusing. Translation, yeah, and gets confusing. Yeah, yeah, is is because the translation just turned to dog shit right at the end of Shibuya. Shibuya. Yeah. It, yeah. It's yeah, he took over. I think right at the end of the Mahito fight, or right in the middle of it, like right when um, Toto shows up. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's it's. So about the Fuas. <laughs> Let's uh, let's uh, end this on a more positive note. I think we've yeah we, we've ranted and raved enough. Uh, we I, mean, I did kind of want to talk about stuff we've been watching. Like what? Um, Bo we, Jack the Horseman. Yeah, so we we watched a lot of Bo Jack. All Horseman. of it, not a lot of it. Uh, I mean, yeah, it. we watched the whole series over the last couple of weeks because yeah. he's been sick. And um, God, I cried so much. I it's, feel like it might be a. I, I said this to Jeff. I was like, damn, I think it's a problem that we end these episodes and you're like, you got a couple hours of being like, oof. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's life. So anyway, the, the, it's definitely, definitely do be a comp. Mm. It's one of the best depictions of depression ever. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. yep. And like, and depending on where you are in life and shit, sometimes that you, you, you just end the episode being like, yep. Instead of being devastated. <laughs> You're such a Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's a joke. No, you should watch BoJack. Watch Horseman. it. If you haven't it's, watched it's it. Like, 
I... it's it's the peak of adult animated cartoons from America. It's as incredible. An art it, form. Is, it is just incredible. Um, like it's, it's episodes like stupid piece of shit, free churro. Um, the view from halfway down. Yeah. Fuck. The view from halfway down is, I think one of the only episodes that actually gets to me and stuff. Yeah. I think it's the second last episode or yeah, third, it's the third second last. last episode. Um, um, yeah, I think that's one of the only episodes that truly like I need to take a break after. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a fucking masterpiece, and that's why I need to take a break after it. Like it is, it's just incredible. Yeah, I mean, f- free churro too, but it ends on a really good punchline that like brings it back yeah. to, to so that you can keep watching. But like, it's that one's multiple kinds of genius. <laughs> that's yeah, but like BoJack Horseman, absolute masterpiece. Cannot recommend it enough. I feel like we need to do, like, a separate podcast or something talking about it. Uh, we also watched Fallout. Um, yeah, and I think we had... So, for, for... for What's the word I'm looking for? For reference. For reference, Jeff is a Fallout fan. I only know, like, basic shit off of watching a couple... Like, seeing a few hours of gameplay from other so people. So, I, I want to I be clear on what kind of Fallout fan I am, because there's a lot of different kinds of Fallout fans. I've been okay. looking like slobby as shit. I mean, it's these camping the chairs. Yeah, yeah, these camping this chairs. Is, are... If you sit back, this is how it is. These are yeah. camping chairs. Um, but I, so I want to clarify, because there's lots of different kinds of Fallout fans. I am a Fallout fan who got into it with three, then played New Vegas, and New Vegas became my favorite game of all time. And then I was extremely disappointed with four, never played 76, have played some of one and two, but never finished them because they're old. 76 so was the one with the hilarious, um, um, like, pre- what are those called? Premium Collector's Edition? Drama? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, that, was, the, that was 76, the, right? Oh, my God, I remember that. It was like that. a burlap sack. And, and also an there. actual, like, Pip-Boy thing, and it was, it was, yeah. Okay, sorry, it's my only reference for 76. <laughs> yeah, 76 is the live service one. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, um, yeah, so, so we watched Fallout, and I would not have continued watching it on my own. I think for, for, I guess, yeah, I, I, I watched it with you and I was like, yeah, because it's on, but I think I, it didn't really super hook me. Um, I wasn't huge on like, and this is nothing. I don't think that it shouldn't, I don't think, yeah, I don't think that it shouldn't be in there. My brain is, is tapping out. I don't think that it shouldn't be in there, but I wasn't huge on the like, over the top gore and stuff like the over the top bloodiness and stuff nothing against it but it was like almost cartoonish at some points yeah um and i wasn't huge on the grossness in that sense um yeah i mean i watched till the end um and as like a not aware very much of fallout stuff besides a little bit it wasn't bad you got the story? Yeah, I understood. Got... It wasn't hard to follow or anything. I get it. Um, Some of the twists towards the end were pretty good, right? Yeah. Um, but the biggest turnoff for me was the like almost cartoonish level of cool. gore. Yeah. Which is a selling point for Fallout. Yeah, so that's, yeah. That's, 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 that is what it is. I'm not saying it shouldn't be there. You're just not into... F- I, yeah. It was, yeah, I was just like, uh, that was a little much, guys. But, like, uh, not in the sense that you guys shouldn't have done that, in the sense that it's not my taste. There's literally a perk that you can get building your character in a lot of Fallout games where you will produce more blood when you kill enemies called Bloody Mess. Oh, well, there, um, there you go, you know? You, you, like, you can trade good things that help your character for actually, just more gore effects. That's actually, the- I didn't enjoy Fallout because her suit wasn't made of latex. Oh yeah, that that the because fucking... her ass wasn't fat and made of latex. God, I remember. Yeah, the... <laughs> the same fucking culture war tourist people were were bitching about that for like three days, and and had like an AI redraw of the girl's butt. I... Anyway, I did like the 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 costuming was actually really well done. The yeah. the, the sets questionable, I guess. Some of some, some of them are really at, good. At some points, you could tell they were in a very small space. But the 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 town set. <laughs> oh yeah, the yeah. towns were great, but like. Yeah, the costumes and the and, effects. And the vault, were... the vault was really good. Yeah. I mean, the vault's, like, the vault's kind of the perfect set to build on a soundstage, right? Yeah, and they, but, they... but uh, yeah, I just want to say the costumes were incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's worth noting. Um, um, I mean, I fucking hated that she wasn't in Leighton. Uh, but... 
Which, who's your favorite sense. character out of the three main characters? I don't really have one because I don't. I didn't particularly attach to any of them. I like the ghoul. I mean, everybody likes the ghoul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I had, to, I guess. I mean, I, I yeah. I, I thought it was like speaking as a Fallout fan. I think I like his, the personality is great, but the, his like of course that's just how their faces are. But the effects on that were a little too good. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. <laughs> a little too good. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking as a Fallout fan, I I thought it was really cool that they did some things that you couldn't really do in a Fallout game that legitimately expanded the lore, um, specifically around Vault Tech and what happened in the past. Like I thought that was really cool. Um, I thought that the general mystery was interesting, although like I I saw what was coming from like the halfway point as soon as she talked about her mom and the son um, yeah. without spoiling things, but if you've seen it. But yeah, I think, I mean, let's, let's not kid ourselves. Everybody's watched it already who's interested in it. But like, I think it's good, and I think it will make a lot of people, not necessarily you because you're not into the juxtaposition of horrific gore and 1950s kitsch that is yeah. the whole... Yeah, yeah, also I think that the... Ni- yeah, yeah, also I'm not huge on that old, old vibe. You know? Not my thing. Yeah. But instead of trying to change or cancel it, I say not my thing. Yeah. Take note, losers. Perfectly valid. <laughs> don't like, don't watch. We- yeah. Oh, my God. Don't like, don't watch. Bitch, bring that back. Um, bring it back. We, we as a society have moved too far from don't like, don't watch. Yeah, we need that back for real. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, other than that, I think, like, it's, it's good. I think it might make some new fans. Hopefully, a lot of new fans. It made me. It has. It has well, actually. I have seen a lot of a lot of people like streamers I follow started playing Fallout because of the show. So it made me want to like sit down and like play the the CRPGs, like the classic ones. Maybe I'll do that on stream. Oh yeah. They're kind of they're shorter. They're choice driven. You know, they're they're fun games. Yeah. Yeah. That and they won't tax the the um, system the system too much. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I've been really wanting to get into those finally after replaying New Vegas so many times. Um, but yeah, uh, I, th- I thought that was good. And then the last series that I want us to talk about real fast um, that we watched right at the start of when we got here that I want to recommend is Sanctuary. Oh, um, yeah. That's not new or anything, but... It's, it's a sumo... Oh, it was, it was so good, except the uh, last episode, but it was so good. Yeah, uh, yeah, the last episode's kind of disappointing, but other it's than that... It's also only half length. It's, yeah. only, it's only like 25 minutes yeah. instead of 40. Yeah, it, it, real, real blue balls moment. But other than that, S- Sanctuary so, on Netflix, I won't say much, because it's... It, it, I think it'll grab you. Yeah, in one um, episode. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Sanctuary, Sumo Story, fucking great. great. We still have to watch Shogun. I want to watch Shogun. Yeah, we got to we gotta check that out next. We'll report back what we think of Shogun on the next podcast episode. Let's, you want to close this off on the, the Kuji story? Uh, or do you, do you have anything else to... Yeah, I just, I've been playing Another Crab's Treasure. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the I, I, goofy, I, goofy, oh, sorry. Goofy, goofy crab game by the Crab Company. Yeah, it's kind of like Sekiro meets Battle for Bikini Bottom. Um, it, so it's, you know, a Souls-like, but designed for, uh, I'd say, a younger and more casual audience while still providing a hearty amount of challenge to somebody who likes Souls-likes, who has beaten Sekiro and beaten all of the bosses in Sekiro. But also it's got a easy mode. Uh, no, it doesn't have an easy mode. It has assist mode. So you can change, like, a whole bunch of No, but stuff. I'm talking about the, the gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, that's, that's... Give Krill a gun is a separate option from easy mode. So there are difficulty no, slides... I'm, I'm, no, I'm calling it, like, true easy mode. Yeah, so there's, there's an option where you can give the crab a big gun and just... It insta-kills any other crab because it's a gun. I don't want to get into this argument because I know we have very different opinions on this. Right, yeah. and I think it's it, like I, it'll be a long conversation that my brain's not ready for. So perhaps if people care, it can be a next time one. But I think personally that more games and most games should have an easier light mode. And I know you don't agree. I know that you don't agree. And 
that that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But to, to me, I, I like that Sekiro puts up a wall that I have to get over and there is no way around it. And but, I personally feel like that's bad and shitty and dumb. But, but so, I don't, I don't want to get too into it, though, because I know we have complete opposite right. opinions on this and it's a good conversation. But my brain is on empty already and we're yeah. two hours in. So, so. the only thing I want to I want to say about that is, <laughs> is another crab's another crab's treasure has kind of turned me around on it a little because I know it has an assist mode. Right? I win, I, I win, I win. You haven't? <laughs> I know it has... Cut the camera, cut the camera, I win. I know it has the assist mode. I haven't felt any temptation to turn it on, even when I was fighting the same boss, like, 20 times. Oh, it was more than 20. It was 20. Okay. Okay. Um, I was there, okay. Even when I was fighting this... I mean, I... He was two-shotting me, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I built know, that's, a yeah. glass cannon build, but I did it to challenge myself. And the thing is, I, I, I like that FromSoft games are tuned to a specific level of difficulty and they don't care about the experience outside of that. And, like, I think Another Crab's Treasure, to a certain extent... Because it, it is a little bit glitchier. It is a little bit less tuned in general. But, I mean, it's also an 11-person indie team, so that's part of that. Yeah. Um, Speaking of which... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It, it, but it does show that, like, I, it, there can be room for both in one game. And I would really like to see you play it at some point. I'd like to, to see some strange, fluffy moth play it maybe but perhaps i don't know that bitch so yeah <laughs> i don't know how i'll get that message to her because i don't know that bitch um yeah I, I don't know that bitch either but i do think she followed us to japan <gasps> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> she wants our light bulb <laughs> um but yeah i i would love to see you or somebody like you who's not into <laughs> souls like games and is a moth play Play uh, uh, another crab's treasure because I do think it strikes a really good balance between providing guys like me the the kind of challenge that we're like yeah hurt me daddy while at the same time um, allowing for you know Casuals. easier more Casuals. casual play. Um, I'm, uh, that's fine. I'm a casual about that kind of shit. And, and if I get challenged too hard, I will just kind of unless like it takes an extreme attachment like you saw with Persona. Right, mm -hmm. with I've been replaying P3P. I replayed P3P. I just finished, and like that is one of the few games where I'm willing to to go back and rechallenge myself. Would I have to be insanely attached to a game? Um, yeah, you actually went and you fought the Reaper. <laughs> that fuck that bitch. And you keep saying you're not going to go fight Theo, but she, she's going to go fight Theo at some I point. I can't hurt him. It's my... She's going to go fight Theo. Anyway, um, oh. I just wanted to throw out there though about Agro Crab yeah. that their other. Big, they've got a couple other games, I think, but one of their no, they other... Have two, they publish other games, but their only two games are going, uh, under. going under. So and... I just want to say Going Under is insanely fun as well, and you guys should try it. Um, I played a little bit of it. It's on Switch. It's on PC. I don't know what else it's on. But I played it on the Switch, and it was genuinely so fun, and I want to go back. But yeah, it, like she, she doesn't play hard games at all. But like... Yeah, I, I don't like... I have a confession. Kingdom Hearts was a little too hard for me. I mean, the original. I, I haven't gone back since I was like 13 or 14, but still. Anyway, was I don't like. One or two? Both. <laughs> okay, that's. Both. Because <laughs> I can see it with Kingdom Hearts 1. That game's. That game's in Kingdom doesn't... Hearts 1, I got stuck in the Alice in Wonderland world, and I spent like, an, like a couple hours there, and then I gave up and never went back to the game. There's a couple bosses there who are filters. I, I, I see it. The whole game's a filter for me, but anyway. <laughs> Anyway, we're getting really sidetracked. Um, we should wrap it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all, all I want to say, uh, other we, than that, about another crab's treasure, yep. real fast. Yep, 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 yep. Um, good puns, too. Very good puns. There's a lot of good jokes. Like, great script in general. Um, the shell system is really cool. It's interesting because so many Souls likes have gotten away from using shields. And this one's like all built around shield based combat with the shell. Uh, and it makes it really interesting and fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, so, yeah, I would say check it out if you like Souls Likes. And if you don't like Souls Likes and don't like the prospect of getting good, it's got both in the options menu 
options to make it easier and like if you don't want to deal with doing corpse runs to get your experience back it's just got a button that lets you get your experience back you can adjust enemy health enemy damage a whole bunch of stuff very granular stuff to make it easier in the way that you want to but also it takes a little bit of Zelda design in where you know in Zelda how you can pick up heart containers to get more health so it's got both a level system where you put points in to get health but then also if you explore the game it's got heart pieces and heart containers that you can use to get more health and upgrade your damage so there are even if you're building your character in a specific way you will still level up in all your stats over time just by exploring so it's Fun a game. good compromise. Fun game. Or or play Going Under, or both. Yeah. Going Under, if you hate uh, crypto bros and hate tech startup bros and hate your boss, going play Going Under. under. Is good. Play Going Under. Um, and if you hate capitalism in general, play Another Crab's Treasure, because it's about how it's leading us to an inevitable apocalypse that will destroy us all, and those who think that they're uh, going to get away from it and that other people just aren't climbing fast enough are in for a rude awakening. Yep, so anyway. <laughs> uh, Kuji. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. Um, I have this obsession with this thing called, these things called fuas. Um, I, have a, I, I don't know what it is about fuas and what they do to my brain, but like... I love them so much. I, and it's so hard to explain because like there is an entire fandom up for just Fua's and like they have not, if they have gotten nothing to do with the characters, like, um, I mean, there's an entire fandom for just Fua's and then there's a separate entire, much, much deeper fandom for the Fua plushie of, of Satoru Gojo, <laughs> AKA Fua Go. Fua Go. AKA Fua Go. Yes. Who is, um, who is a character in himself. There's doujins about Fuego, both, both R18 and not R18, which is... There's doujins of him meeting Gojo and then... They're not... This, 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 this round egg has nothing to do with Jujutsu guys. <laughs> and I love it. Anyway, so I love Fuas. I, like, have... They activate something in my brain where I'm just happy. Um, and right before we started, they put up a... Usually you can just buy them as blind boxes or buy the complete set. Um, in like a, you know, a full box of them and you get all six of them. Um, but they just released a Kuji for them, which is like a lottery draw. And uh, there's a mega size one. Usually they only sell small, medium, large. Um, but this Kuji introduces mega size. And there were only two mega sizes, which was Yuji and Gojo. And then there's like the whole cast for um, the smaller ones. And there was only a 2% chance of getting... The, the, the mega sized one. And how many rolls did you do? Six, I think. Yeah, six. six I got six tickets uh, at 800 yen each. And I got both the mega size Yuji and the mega size Gojo. Let's go. High five. Ow. That really hurt. Ow. <laughs> Say sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all. I got really lucky. I got, I got, RNG blessed me. I also got a sleepy Choso. A little sleep. That's a small size one, but that's fine. Um, I like the small size ones because I take them around. Um, if you follow you can, me on Twitter, you'll see lots of pictures of my fuas around. You can go get your Choso right now if you want to show them. Okay. Oh, you got both of them. Yes. So um, one thing I need to say, by the way, this is one person I follow on Twitter who has like, so here's Fuago. He's just a little guy. You can see why. Immediately. He's, he's just he's, a little guy. Um, <laughs> And there's this one person I follow on Twitter who has like 50 something of them, five zero something of them. Each with different names. Yes, I was going to say that. I was going to get to that. Every single one has a different name based off of like, because of course they're, they're not like super high quality because they're, they're cheap 800 yen plushy keychains, right? Um, so all of them have like certain flaws and stuff like my Choso. Here's Choso. Here's my Fua Choso. Um, you can't see it but he has a tiny bit of glue residue in his hair. So, like, the person with all of the, the Gojos would name that one something related to glue. It's, it's just the best. I love that person, and, like, they draw fan art of their own specific Fuagos. Anyway, um... What? Nothing. 
I'm, I'm listening to you. You look concerned. I'm listening. You look concerned. Do I? Yes. Anyway, uh, here, I'm obsessed with Fuas, and I got very lucky. RNG blessed me. It's so hard to do with our camera. There we go. RNG blessed me. Um, here's... Mwah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That's it? Yeah, that's all. I, I just wanted to point out, you said they're 800 yen... Uh, but to give some idea of how much people are obsessed with <gasps> oh my Fuwa God. specifically. The aftermarket and, and ghetto. The Fuwa ghetto is even more expensive. Remember the Okinawa ghetto? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, these, when you buy them and you pre-order them, are 800 yen each. Um, when they sell out... What's the aftermarket price? Um, the Okinawa Suguru one in his little Okinawa outfit is about $300 right now. That was like instantly as soon as soon as they because he was a pre order bonus. So as soon as pre orders closed and people were getting them in the mail, he was two hundred dollars and now he's up to three hundred dollars. Like for for an egg, for, for the an small egg, one, right? yeah. For the, the big ones are like three to four hundred dollars for the medium, and then like eight to nine hundred dollars for the XL one um, because they were exclusive to like a different website. Um, it's fucking crazy. The fu- the Fua economy is insane. Anyway. I hope you understand why, because... They are adorable. The Gojo economy is also insane, and that is multiplying with the Fua economy. Anyway, you can do the transition out that you did before. That you... That you okay, bye! Bye! Mwah! Why'd you do that? Because it's funny. <laughs>